You are watching College Football on ESPN3. Tonight, we come to you from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where the Golden Lions from Arkansas Pine Bluff are getting set to host the Southern Jaguars from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Hello, everyone. I'm Butch Alston, along with college football analyst Jorge Vargas. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we think we have a great ball game for you. Of course, this is kind of like the old guard versus the new guard, because coming into this one, of course, Southern University actually won the Western Division Championship last year. Arkansas Pine Bluff comes in on a roll. They are 3-1, and one, winners of their last three consecutive games. And you know what, Jorge? I, we expect to see a lot of offense between these two squads. Yeah. If you like offense, you want to sit down and grab some sandwiches to relax. <laughs> and enjoy this game. We expect uh, probably a upward, upwards of 70 points of offense, I would say, today. Uh, these offense want to prove a lot. When it's conference game, they're ready to let things roll. They're warmed up now, ready to go. And for Southern, this is their first conference game, so they they're ready to show out. And coming into this one, both squads have a lot of explosive players. Let's take a look now at the visitors from Baton Rouge, and we start with number eight, Ladarius Skelton. And the thing about this guy, he's very familiar with this area. He's a good quarterback, but this is a homecoming for him. He played his high school ball at Pine Bluff High School, and he won an awful lot of games there. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, speaking of winning from seventh grade to the senior year the man only lost seven games that's impressive he took pine bluff high school to three consecutive 6a state title games winning the last two his junior and senior year and then if that wasn't enough he took the basketball team to a state championship as well in his senior year this guy is everything about winning that's how he gets it done went to junior college and guess what he won another championship there so he is certainly ready to roll on the other side the golden lions can do it through the air and they can do it on the ground and usually the ball goes to that guy number two taylor porter the defending rushing champion in the sweat well when you average a little over five yards a carry that's how you get things done six touchdowns this season already 336 yards he is the hammer he is the man that they are going to try to loosen up that panther defense and then use all their weapons and get them rolling to attack well we're getting set for a good old-fashioned cat fight tonight here in pine ball as the golden lions host the jaguars from baton rouge kickoff is coming up next on espn3 don't forget the tag rookie carhartt We've got your back 24 7. It is second and about six for Smith. Balls at the 27 yard line. Glad you could be with us tonight for this SWAC showdown between Arkansas Pine Bluff and Southern University here at Simmons Bank Field. Southern has won the toss. They have elected to receive the football. So Arkansas Pine Bluff will be kicking to Southern to start this game off tonight. And we expect a really exciting ball game. And let's talk a little bit while we have a chance about the coaches. First, we will start with the visitors from Baton Rouge. Dawson Odoms is entering his eighth season at Southern University. And during that time, He's never, ever had a losing season. And for the homestanding, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Golden Lions, Cedric Thomas is entering his second year. And as I mentioned on the top, his team is off to a 3-1 and one start. And now Austin Krasminski will get us underway. His kick goes deep and into the end zone. Christopher Cheney follows it in, but that will be a touchback. So the Jaguars will start on offense first and 10 from the 25-yard line. And with that... We will see the guy we talked about right on the top. Number eight, Ladarius Skelton, will come out to play quarterback. You know, Jorge talked about his history. He's from Pine Bluff. He went to high school here, won a lot of games at Pine Bluff, and now he comes back. So you know he has to be motivated for this one. And his family's probably confused. They're used to wearing Pine Bluff colors and now have their southern blues on, right? That's got to be a little confusing. So Skelton at quarterback puts a man in motion. He hands it off, and a big gain for the Jaguars on the first carry of the day. That is number two, Devon Ben, on the carry, and he makes a nice pick up there last week. Ben carried nine times for 39 yards, and they hand it to Ben again, and he powers forward for another big gain and a first down for the Jaguars. Yeah, look at the pace of Southern right now. They are certainly uh, putting Pine Bluff on their heels right now. They're trying to keep that pace up. Uh, getting plays off with about 10 seconds. Blake Connor on the stop for the Golden Lions. First down now for the Jaguars operating at about the 39-yard line. Motion. Skelton tries to throw the other way. Wide receiver screen. It was crowded, but look at Bedford 
working his way through the traffic, and he comes up with another first down for the Jaguars. And once again, number 14, Blake Connor, helping out on the tackle. Yeah, but Skelton did a great job. As soon as that ball was snapped, he looked hard left. Looked like he was going to throw it left and went right back to the right for that wide receiver screen. Nice job there. Good job by Bedford. It didn't look like they had a lot there, but he made something out of nothing. And it's a first down for Southern University, operating now in Golden Lions territory. So Skelton calling out the signals. He's a good runner also. This time he hands inside again. Ben looking for some room, but there's not much going on there. Really good defense by that front four from the Golden Lions coming up there. Jakari McKinney, one of the guys there. And number 58, Jalen Stewart, the 6'4", 248-pounder from Memphis, helping out on the tackle. Yeah, Pine Bluff saying, look, you can do a lot of things, but you're not going to run it up our gut. That's just not going to happen. We talked to Coach earlier this week, and that's exactly what he said. They stopped the run before anything. So the Jaguars on the move. Skelton with a pass, and he overshoots a man who was wide open there. He was trying to hit Jamar Washington. And he was open right there in the seam. He just overshot him. Yeah, just a little inaccurate there, but a, a nice play call. And, again, uh, Southern really working on the pace. They slowed down a little bit and started looking to the sidelines for extra calls. But I liked those first four or five plays. Just boom, boom, boom. They had them scripted and ready to go. Big third down here. Third down coming up for Ladarius Skelton. He calls Pine Bluff, Arkansas, his hometown. And... Boy, he'd love to get a win tonight. Has some time. Throws one out near the sideline. And it's going to be a catch right there by number 81. Jadavion Davis with a catch right there for the Jaguars. Sean Steele, number 12, making the stop for the Golden Lions. Yeah, they got him four yards, but they're now they're big fourth down right here. Yeah, fourth down coming up for the Jaguars. Fourth and about five. And so far, that Southern offense is still out on the field. So an aggressive move coming up from the Jaguars early in this ballgame. Skelton, Skelton calling out the signals. He's looking to pass. Has a lot of time, and a man is wide open out there in the flat. That is Bedford. He falls down before number 21, Jalen Thigpen, would come in to touch him down, but he was wide open on that play, Jorge. Oh, Bedford was wishing he could have got his feet underneath him because that could have been six easily. Uh, no question about that, but what he did, even though he was stumbling, he made sure he made the catch. How about Coach Odoms rolling the dice early in this game as the Jaguars convert on fourth and about five. So first down for Southern. And the handoff goes inside to Ben again, and he just powers his way forward. Picks up about three yards inside. You know, he has been, last year he was their leading rusher with 707 yards. So he's the guy the Jaguars like to go to for that tough yardage inside. Oh, uh, yeah, he's got 228 yards before this game. Hot Girl Summer continues at the VSU Homecoming Concert on Wednesday, October 16th, starring Megan Thee Stallion and Little TJ and featuring Quando Rondo at the VSU Multipurpose Center. Don't don't miss one of the hottest concerts this fall. Seven yards to go Tickets are on sale Jaguars. now and can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com or at the Tri-City Designs box right. office located at the VSU Multipurpose Center. I'm the VSU Homecoming it. Concert starring Megan Thee Stallion and Lil TJ featuring Quando Rondo Wednesday, October 16th. Steel again. That's the man of steel for the Golden Lions, a 5'11", 178-pound junior from Arlington, Texas. They marked him just shy of that first down. Wow, I thought he, I thought he kind of got that. So uh, tough spot there. But what happened, the receiver fell down. He was just about to throw that ball and realized the receiver was slipping and then just pulled it down and ran. Great move by Skelton, keeping his poise on the play. This time he turns and he hands inside, and there's not going to be much room going on there. A short gain for the Jaguars. And the stop will be by Jalen Thigpen. And the Jaguars are going to come up with another big down. That's the first down, though. He picked up the first down, so Southern converts again. Skelton on the keeper, and we have whistles on the field. And the officials are going to stop the play. Yeah, it looks like big Jonathan Bishop uh, moved a little. He was, he was pulling on that play. It looked like he got a little bit too excited to run that uh, pull around there. 65 offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Yeah, You're Jonathan right, Bishop. Uh, Jorge, that was Jonathan Bishop, the 6'2", 300-pounder from Birmingham. 
And it's interesting because when we talked to Coach Dawson Odom this week, that's one of the things he specified, that they wanted to get off to a quick start. He said, we must get out of the gates quickly, and that's what the Jaguars are doing tonight. Yeah, I think he put the alarm clock on. <laughs> it got him going. First and 15 now. Skelton looking to pass. Throws the screen the opposite way, and it's almost intercepted by the Golden Lions. Boy, I tell you what, someone sniffed that one out because he tried to go back with the screen, and I think it was Sean Steele, number 12, who was out there to break that one up. Yeah, you can't get there. Put your hands up. That's exactly what he did. Uh, ricocheted the ball up, and uh, they almost got underneath that for an interception. So uh, got to be more careful with the ball. Solid defense by the Golden Lions on that play. It's going to bring up a second and long as the Jaguars motion to the left. Skelton hands it inside to Ben on the draw play, and Ben is dragged down inside by number 21, Jalen Thigpen. Nice tackle. Good, solid tackle there. It looked like he might have gotten a little more on that play, but Thigpen got him down. Yeah, it was a good tackle because that could have been a lot more dangerous. And it was an interesting draw play. Uh, Skelton did a, it was a real fast take it to the back and stick it underneath your uh, running back's arms there. Uh, usually draws are a little bit more slow developing. This was a quick draw. Thigpen had nine tackles last week for the Golden Lions in their win over Tennessee State. And now we have an official timeout on the field. Arkansas Pine Bluff. That's the first time timeout of the first half. So the timeout is charged to Arkansas Pine Bluff, and they want to do something to try to tighten up that defense and see if they can do something. But let's talk a little bit about it. You put your finger on it. The pace of play by the Southern Jaguars, they've come out with that up-tempo, and it's really paid some big dividends. Yeah, when you put, put them on their heels, and, and again, I don't think Pine Bluff got a chance to sink themselves into the game at all, and I think it's a great strategy uh, for Southern. They talked about getting off to a fast start. Coach Dawson did. Uh, and, and when you do that, you set the pace and you kind of set a script for your team. And then they execute it well. I think that's the other ingredient, right? You can set all the pace you want, and if you don't execute it really well, it doesn't matter what your script says. You've got to be able to deliver, and that's exactly what his team did. A nice job by Southern getting off. Big third down here. Third down and about 12 yards for another Jaguars first down. Skelton at quarterback. He started really slowly last week in the game at FAMU, but you know what? He's come out today, and he is focused on his homecoming here in Pine Bluff. Skelton in the pocket, has nice protection, throws over the middle, and it's almost intercepted. Number 21, Jalen Thigpen, he's been in the thick of it early in this ball game, and he almost came up with a huge turnover for the Golden Lions. Well, Skelton's got to thank his receiver, Jamar Washington. Jamar Washington pulled that ball right out of from being an interception there. So he is very lucky not to watch the defensive play by Washington there, pulling that ball out, not letting the interception happen. That's huge. So Cesar Baraja will come on to attempt the field goal. It will be a 40-yard attempt, and it's going to be blocked. And it's blocked by the Golden Lions. So the long drive is for naught as the Golden Lions come up with a great defensive play on the 40-yard field goal attempt by Cesar Baraja. Number 29, Jordan Brown, appeared to be the guy in there to put the pressure on. Yeah, Cesar just had it. looked like it was a little bit low taken off out of there. He needed to get that ball up. You see, it didn't get too much beyond helmet high. And you've got to get that ball up in the air. Yeah, Jordan Brown was the guy that picked it up. The, the block was somewhere in the middle of the pile, but you're right, Jorge. There wasn't a lot of altitude That's on right. that kick, so it's kind of tough to get it over that big line. Yeah, you got a, some defensive linemen that are six something. You better you better kick it up. So now the Golden Lions will take over on offense with Skylar Perry at quarterback. Perry, that lefty, throws one out into the flats, has a man, and a big pickup by Taylor Porter. Porter right away with an impact play to start the game for the Golden Lions as Keenan Tate came over to make the stop for the Jaguars. Yeah, we talked to him about being a pounder. Well, that's a great showcase of how he can do things to the outside, get him the ball to the outside, made some great moves, cutting it up. And speaking of up-tempo, the Golden Lions are coming out pretty quickly themselves. This time the handoff goes to Porter again, and he doesn't have much room inside. 
He's going to be brought down by the Kavion champion, the big guy from Spring, Texas. Went to Decaney High School. I say big guy. He's 6'9", 290 pounds. Oh, man. That's humongous. I think we have to go with that. Uh, he's still growing, man. Just yeah. a baby. <laughs> still growing. But he made two yards out of that, and that really should have probably been no, no gain at all. So good job by Porter. Second down for the Golden Lions. Skyler Perry under pressure, and he goes down. And that is Lunkins. Calvin Lunkins, number one, who was shot out of a cannon and made that stop in the backfield. Oh, great job. Look, he just comes barreling right through. The back picks the wrong guy. He, you can't let him go clean. And he had no time to make a decision there for Scholar Perry. It's just too fast. Uh, Lunkins just blew that whole play up. You know, he's the guy, he's been on the Dean's list for four consecutive years, and, and he wears number one because he has the top GPA on the team. So I'd give him number one, too, especially when he can make plays like that. Great play. So a big third down coming up now. Pass over the middle is almost caught and then almost intercepted by the Jaguars. Yeah, Lunkins had a chance at trying to intercept that. Two, two, Pan two Panthers had a chance to intercept that ball. Yeah, Smith. Maurice Smith had a shot at the interception late, but he could not hang on to it. So now that will bring on the punting team for the Golden Lions as Miles Piney will try to onto the field to kick the ball back to the Southern Jaguars. And deep for the Jags will be number 24. Big defensive stop by the Panthers, stepping right up. Uh, getting the ball back to their offense here. So Piney gets the kick away. And it goes deep, and it's going to be fair caught by, by number 24, Brandon Hinton. And that is where the Jaguars will start first and 10 with the ball resting at the 18-yard line. But while we have a chance over here, you had Lunkins on that big sack. He's been one of the leaders on the team for the Jaguars. Last year, you know, he had led the team with 82 tackles, and he, he's one of their stalwarts. Oh, yeah, he's got 19 tackles already he's going in here, seven of those solo tackles, 12 well, assists, which tells me he's a guy that moves around a lot. Well, we will pause for a timeout here in Arkansas Pine Bluff with no score between... They must never have tasted wind. The new Low Rider S. Classic look, new roar. And welcome back to Simmons Bank Field, everyone. No score between the Southern University Jaguars and the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. And that is Ladarius Skelton on the keeper for the Jaguars with a nice gain. He's going to be taken down by number 12, Sean Steele. The 5'11", 178-pound junior from Arlington who's made several plays early in this ballgame. This time, Skelton passes out to the outside to Bedford. He has it, and he fights his way upfield for another nice gain of about 10 yards for the Jaguars. And once again, Steele is there to make the stop. Last week, he had a career-high three pass breakups in that game against Florida A&M. So Steele is being tested early in this ball game. Yeah, notice how quick they get that ball off in those first two plays. They are moving. So Skelton with another first down for the Jaguars. They moved the ball well on their first possession, and he's picking up right where they left off. This time, he flares it out to Cameron Mackey, and Mackey turns up field before he's finally carried out of bounds. But it's another nice gain on first down by the Jaguars. Rico Merriweather, also number nine, over there to get him out of bounds. Yeah, Jaguars doing a nice job of, of mixing up the offensive sets and mixing up the play call and keeping uh, the Golden Lions on their heels. Second down and about three now for the Jaguars. Offensive coordinator Chinnis Berry has come in with a really good-looking game plan so far in this one. Skelton turns, hands to Ben, and he's going to be wrestled to the ground by number 91, Jakari McKinney. You know, football is a game of being predictable and knowing what you're going to get with Ben. You know he's going to always fall forward and he's going to explode. Once he sees any kind of space, he just takes off. He doesn't hesitate at all, so as a, as a coach, you can plan on that. So far in the game, Skelton 5 of 8 for 42 yards passing. This time he rolls to his right, has a man again. And he's finally going to have another first down again. That is Bedford, T.J. Bedford, and number 35, Paul Reeves. 
closes in in a hurry. The 5'10", 192 pound senior. Yeah, Bedford's doing a great job of making himself, you know, you present your numbers to the quarterback, you show him you're wide open real fast, and your quarterback can pull the trigger. Skelton, this time hands it to Ben, a good job on the zone read, and Ben is going to be very close to another first down for the Jaguars. It depends on the spot. They did this because He's going to be very close, but another good run by Ben. And, and once again, Southern doing a great job with that, that run-pass mix early in this ballgame. And this is one of the things... Ben, again, dancing, showing some patience season. before just Understand going right up the middle, and he's going to be picking up that first down for the Jaguars. Let's see where the officials put it down. Zion Former, number 71, one of the defensive players on the spot for the Golden Hot Lions. Hot Girl Summer continues at the VSU Homecoming Concert on Wednesday, October 16th, starring Megan Thee Stallion and Little TJ, and featuring Quando Rondo at the VSU Multipurpose Center. Don't miss one of the hottest concerts this fall. Big old Tickets are on sale now and can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com or at the Tri-City Designs box office located at the VSU Multipurpose Center. The VSU Homecoming Concert starring Megan Thee Stallion and Lil TJ featuring Quando Rondo Wednesday, October 16th. What's up, y'all? It's your man, Mike. Yeah. And we coming and so right back at you, 2019, the we with the funniest the is true. No score between the Southern Jaguars and the Golden Lions from Arkansas Pine Park. But the super big Samsung QLED TV is made for football. And welcome back to Simmons Bank Field, where the Jaguars are on the move. Christopher Cheney just had a nice run inside for about eight yards for the Jaguars. So they are almost in the red zone again as he turns and hands to Cheney. And Cheney just carries the defense forward, showing some power on the play as that southern offensive line continues to open up the holes. Joshua Wallace making the stop. Well, he averages over five yards a carry. He shows you why. How about I'm going to carry some guys through there? Southern in such a hurry and great pace. They can't even wait for commercial breaks, can they? <laughs> <laughs> so first down and 10 to go for, with the ball resting at about the 16-yard line. Skelton turns, hands inside again, and it's another big gain inside by the Jaguars. And Z Z Xavier Mitchell up quickly to make the stop. Rico Merriweather on the stop. You know, we haven't mentioned it that much, but I'll tell you that the, the offensive line is giving those seams and allowing those backs to be able to make that room there. Skelton again, big hole inside. And it looks like Christopher Cheney again. Number 28 on the carry, and a nice pickup for him. He has very quick feet, and he's one of those guys that can make something happen. Last week he only carried the ball two times, but he was very impressive in those two carries. <laughs> two so good. <laughs> You remember him, right? He's hard to hit. Really has the quick feet and does a good job of dancing inside. But Southern trying to see if they can finish off this drive. Cheney in motion. Skelton keeps. He's in for the touchdown. A great move by Ladarius Skelton. Good job on the fake. He kept it. And then he showed some patience before he ran it in for the touchdown. Yeah, you know, and that tells me that they really trust their offensive line, right? You have a running back, you have a quarterback that is patient enough to look because they can they expect their offensive line to clear some room for them. That's exactly what happened. And great cutback against the grain. Everything going right. He pauses there in the middle in the confusion. Does a nice job faking the handoff there and then just cuts it right up in for the touchdown. Cesar Baraja on for the extra point attempt. And, the kick is up and, good. and, and it is good. Is and good. just like that, the Southern Jaguars have jumped out in front here in Pine Bluff. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. 3.46 to go in the first quarter, and the Southern Jaguars are leading the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions 7 to nothing after that incredible drive that took them down for a touchdown. Skelton had a four-yard TD run to cap that drive to put Southern out in front. It was 12 plays, 83 yards, and we have a touchback on the kickoff. But the drive, Jorge, 12 plays, 83 yards, and it took him four minutes and 20 seconds to put it in the end zone. 
That's exactly what you're looking for. I mean, and again, their, so the, the Southern offense has looked uh, really solid. The first drive they had, they weren't able to get the three, but they come right back undiscouraged. Uh, pace at the beginning of the drives, and then they slow it down and get more methodical towards the end. Uh, but they had some great running, and again, uh, at the end of the day, uh, just just a, a great job by the offensive line creating holes. Uh, Darius Skelton uh, taking it around, uh, on, you know, in a counter kind of play by, the, by him into the end zone. Cedric Thomas, the second-year head coach for Arkansas Pine Bluff. He went 2-9 and nine last year, but a lot of those games were extremely close, and his team is off to a quick start this year, and the give goes to Taylor Porter, and he goes nowhere. He's knocked down after a short gain. The Jaguars tightening up on defense. Joe Davis, number 42, is there to knock him down. Well, when you have a defense that knows your offense is going to hold on the ball for a while, they go, hey, we don't know how many plays we're going to have. So it actually gives your defense more energy. Uh, because they feel like, hey, if we get a good three and out, our offense is going to go there and drive. So it's amazing how that kind of system works. So the officials have a flag on the play. We will hear what they have to say. Holding defense number 10. That's a 10-yard field that added to the end of the run. He's up to the play for the first down. So that's a bonus you like to get, a defensive holding, and you get a first down on the penalty for the Golden Lions. Yeah, whatever works, right? <laughs> if it gets your team going, that's what you're looking for. So the Lions, now Golden Lions, now operating first and 10. Skylar Perry's pass is complete. A diving reception made right there by number 13, Dewan Miller, last year's freshman of the year in the SWAC, did a great job getting his hands on that one uh, for the catch. Oh, he did. He went down low to get it. Nice job. And that time, Perry's going to air it out, but we do have a flag on the play, a little contact, and we could have pass interference on the play as Jordan Eastling was one of the defenders on the spot for the Jaguars. Man, I'll tell you, interference calls nowadays uh, are just hard to come by. I mean, uh, if you breathe on someone, uh, you've got a call coming your way, and, and it, is, it, is, it is incredibly pass tough. Defense, number 23. From the biggest slot, so all of a sudden, just like that, penalties have jump started. It was Chase Foster, the uh, guilty party on, the, on that pass interference call, but penalties have jump started this Golden Lions offense, and they are now in Southern Territory, and they're moving the football. Skyler Perry still at quarterback. Left-handers looking deep. Has a man down there, and he just overshot him because he had an open receiver. Henry Ballard, the 6'3", 205-pound junior from St. Louis, was kind of coasting all by himself. Yeah, Harry was uh, wide open there, about as good as it gets. Uh, and just too much arm, too much arm there. He couldn't run underneath it. Uh, they'll definitely be kicking themselves after they watch that play on tape. So Skyler Perry, who started at quarterback today, I need to mention the Golden Lions do use two quarterbacks. The other quarterback, Shannon Patrick, actually led the game-winning drive last week. With four seconds, he threw a 17-yard touchdown, but this is Perry on the attack. Fires it inside, and it's intercepted. And the Jaguars have the ball. Joe Davis read that one all the way, and he stepped in front to make the interception for the Southern Jaguars. You see a big man make that move there. Watch this right there. I mean, he just read that ball, jumps right out in there. And I love it. He, he almost switched the arm like a good running back there. There he is. Switched it. Takes it up the field. Great job. That doesn't fires up a defense like that. Well, you know what that means. It means someone did a great job during film study this week. They saw that play on tape. He was waiting for it, and when it happened in the game, he just reacted. Yeah, it's, that's coaches giving your players great reads and then those players executing those reads and following through. That's putting, exactly what that is. Putting them in position to make the plays. So a big turnover in this ball game as Ladarius Skelton and the Southern Jaguars get the football back in a big hole. This time inside for number 21, Craig Nelson. And he's going to pick up four or five yards inside. And Rico Merriweather hustling in to make the stop. So that offensive line for Southern doing a great job early in this ball game. Yeah, they're dominating. If they keep up at this pace, it's just going to wear down. I mean, you see these kind of effects in the fourth quarter. 
Craig Nelson again on the, ta on the carry, but not much room working there as A.C. Gilliam came in to make the stop for the Golden Lions. We have 2.16 to go here in the first quarter with the Southern Jaguars leading it. 7 nothing, and we've seen a lot of offense early in this one, even though it is only in the first quarter. Right. Big third down and four here for Southern. Like see if they pull out of the how do they get that to here. Skelton, who's a sophomore who hails the time bluff. Back home playing, and there's a flag on the play as he completes it to Jamar Hot Washington. Hot girl summer continues at the VSU Homecoming on Concert on Wednesday, October 16th, starring Megan Thee Stallion and Little TJ, and featuring Clondo Rondo Blake at the Donner, VSU the Multipurpose senior, Center. Don't miss one of the hottest concerts the this fall. Tickets are on sale now and can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com or at the Tri-City Designs box office located at the VSU Multipurpose Center. The VSU Homecoming Concert starring Megan Thee Stallion and Lil TJ featuring Quando Rondo Wednesday, October 16th. A great job offensively. What's up, y'all? It's your man, Mike Epps. And we're coming right back at you 2019 with the funniest in And he is shifting. And despite him being 5'7", 165, he shows some power at the end. Skelton turns and hands inside, and again, there's room to run inside for Nelson before he is wrapped up by Merriweather. He's made a couple of plays here in the first quarter for the Golden Lions. And what's the Southern is continuing to play at that up-tempo pace. The handoff goes to Nelson, and he just powers his Virginia way State forward. Virginia State University, Gotham Nelson Extravaganza brings you multi-Grammy winner Ty Trimmett and the world-renowned Virginia State University Gospel Chorale on Sunday, October 13th at 5.30 p.m. at the VSU Multipurpose Center. Don't miss an extravaganza of gospel music with Ty Trimmett and the Virginia State University Gospel Chorale on Sunday, October 13th. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com or at the Tri-City Designs box office located at the VSU Multipurpose Four carries for 28. And now we see Nelson getting into the mix. And the Jaguars run it in for the touchdown. The give was to number 42, Joe, excuse me, not Joe Davis. We don't have that on our roster. But obviously it was the big fullback, number 48, taking it in for the touchdown. Gerard Sims with a touchdown for the Southern Jaguars. Can't say enough about the offensive line for the Jaguars. Uh, just, just fantastic job opening. Uh, they ran like a, a little stunt in there, created the seam, and he went right through it. Martel Fontenot on to add the extra point, and he does. And just like that, with 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter, the Southern Jaguars find themselves out in front. 14-0. Here's a look at that touchdown right here. And look at him, a nice little leap there. But look at how many guys from Pine Bluff are on the ground as he goes in there. And that just shows you how good that offensive line created the room there for him to go right in untouched. And Jorge, what a job the Jaguars are doing spreading, spreading the wealth around. Yes. We've had so many different people touching the football here in the first quarter. Well, I think as a defensive player, when you, when you don't know who's getting the ball and you get different sets and they keep mixing it up, it's run. It's a great balance of run and pass. Uh, that's just so that's hard to stop. You get on your heels and it's hard to stop rolling. Well, and so far, I mean, we know uh, Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions can put up some offense. They are averaging 37 points a game, and we're going to see some of that coming up right here as another kickoff sails through the end zone. So the Golden Lions will start with the football on their own 25-yard line, looking to put some points on the board. Yeah, it's been, it's been, Jaguars have been very impressive so far, and I think uh, Pine Bluff, you, you watch, they're going to come out there, they're swinging. Uh, I, I can see them on the sidelines, and their, their coaches are very vocal, and it looks like uh, that offense is ready to roll here. Number 10, Shannon Patrick checks in at quarterback this time for the Golden Lions. He's 6'2", 190 pounds. He's a junior from West Palm Beach. As I mentioned before, he led the winning drive last week for the Golden Lions. This time he turns and he hands to Porter and he's tripped up in the backfield and not a lot of room going on right there. You know, you look at this offensive line for the Golden Lions, 
And, Jorge, this has been one of the best offensive lines in the SWAC. Last year, they only gave up 10 sacks the entire year. And uh, from that standpoint, so far this year, they've only given up five sacks. Yeah, that's impressive when you can do that. And uh, we'll see if they can put it together right here. I mean, uh, you know, Patrick has six TDs on the season, uh, 63% effective as a passer so he's he can certainly be accurate and he's got some weapons i would look him to to, to find ballard or wilkes uh, to start to open things up here and once again that is the end of the first quarter and as we had to break the southern jaguars find themselves with a 14 nothing lead over the golden lions from arkansas pine bluff we'll be right back in just a minute Professional success. We are Southern. And welcome to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where the Golden Lions from Arkansas Pine Bluff are playing host to the Southern Jaguars and SWAC action. And the Golden Lions actually have the football operating second and eight as the handoff goes to Taylor Porter. And he is spun out of bounds after picking up about six yards over there for the Golden Lions. Here's something interesting about Pine Bluff. You know, in the second quarter, they outscore their opponent 54 to 15. So this is exactly what they've been waiting for the second quarter. And then they're, they're ready to unleash the beast, <laughs> shall we say. So second quarter is where they like to get it done. Well, they have a lot of weapons. One of their weapons is not available tonight. Running back Keyshawn Williams, he's out with the knee injury. Of course, he's a major part of that offense. He and Porter have a nice one-two points. This time, the pass goes to Porter. He turns the corner. It's a foot race now, and Porter is going to be spun down by Benjamin Harris as he grabbed him and threw him down, and that's going to be a horse collar on the play. So you're going to tack on to that big game. Yeah, no question about it. I told you, second quarter, they're ready to roll. <laughs> Unleash the beast. That's exactly what they did. Beautiful play. Southern read it, but just a little bit short of that play. And instead, that turns into a huge, huge pickup right here. Well, when you look at Taylor Porter, too, he's one of those guys. He has that speed to get to the edge. And that's what he did right there. You know, that was as good as a handoff, the way they just flipped that ball to him like that. And then the rest was up to him to use his speed to get around the outside. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it was a pretty violent tackle. It was interesting. Porter was on the sideline at first, and then I, I, he waved off coaches and said, I'm going back in there. <laughs> so they were trying to keep him out for at least a play, and uh, he said, no, nope, put his helmet back on, ran right back in there. A, a late hit was the penalty called on the play, and that will set up the Golden Lions with the first and 10, with the ball resting on the 16-yard line. And once again, Porter gets the call, and he works his way forward for a nice gain inside. I guess he said, Coach, if I'm going to be in here, give me the ball. That's what I like doing with it. But isn't it amazing how it looks like the light just went on for Pine Bluff? Well, they're capable of scoring a lot of points, and we see it happening right now as they start to move the offense. Kyle McGregor, one of the Southern Jaguars on the play, Second down coming up for Shannon Patrick in the offense. Floats one deep and is underthrown and intercepted in the end zone. A fine play by that Southern defense. The yeah, that was just... interception by number 26. That is Smith. Tamor Tamori Smith with a fine defensive play to take that one away. Yeah, he didn't put enough air underneath that ball. And, and the one place he couldn't miss was short. And that's exactly what happened. And the defender did a nice job of coming right back to the ball. And, and defenders, I always say, sometimes just wait for the ball. He actually went and got it as well. So that's a great job by Southern there. Well, and that was one of those plays where you know they've done it 100 times. You want that ball high and out. You want it to be fading out to the side. And he hung it up a little too far inside. And Smith came away with the interception for the Jaguars. So once again, Skelton with some room to operate. 
flag down as he goes over to register on the play. Hunter register with the nice catch and run. Number four for the Jaguars. Skills' pass is complete to number four. Hunter register. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, I'm not sure what the flag is for. Looks it, like it's against the, the Jaguars. Yeah, Southern is walking backwards. It, it happened right after he caught the pass. It might have been a block near the line of scrimmage. Illegal low block. Illegal low block. Number nine offense. As has the distance for the goal, still first down. That was Cameron Mackey, the guilty party. And, you know, you come back and you, you cut back on someone, and apparently Cameron Mackey did something that the officials thought was that he probably shouldn't have done in that situation. <laughs> well, you know, it's all part of safety, right? Trying, yeah. trying to keep players uh, a little bit more healthy. And, uh, and again, I'm sure Jaguars fans don't like it, but uh, yeah, you got to keep people from uh, the low blocks like that, especially when you don't see them coming. Skelton with a handoff. Again, he goes to Ben. And he's going to be yanked down. I think he's going to be yanked down for a short loss by Xavier Mitchell. Get some help from Blake Connor. Yeah, I didn't even see the defensive line of, of, of Pine Bluff actually uh, shooting the gaps more. I don't know if they're stunting more, but they're certainly more aggressive. Or now they've settled into the game, they're starting to see what Southern's doing. Uh, but they were certainly off the ball a lot quicker than in the gap. 13-15 to go here in the second quarter. Southern leading at 14-0. Skelton with some time in the pocket, looks around, ball is up, tipped up, still up, and I think it's intercepted. What a play by number 14, Blake Connor. That ball must have been tipped up three or four times before it ended up in the hands of Blake Connor. I think that was a game of hot potato there. I thought it hit the ground at some point. I really did. I, I can't believe it actually stayed up in the air the whole time and didn't hit the ground. But what a play, and, and how about not giving up on a play like that? Let's well, it looks, watch it. It looks like at least three players actually touched that football. You can see right there the offensive guy had it, and then it is tipped over to uh, Oh yeah, beautiful play. Absolutely great job. Don't give up on the play. Nice job. Blake Connor, how about those hands? Woo. The rolling on the field is an interception. That play is under further review. So as they take a look at that one over here, I think they're going to come back and give that interception to Blake Connor. Yeah, I don't see anything conclusive in there that would overturn that. They called it an interception. Uh, I, I don't see anything there that would say that it's not. You know, Blake Connor played a whale of a defensive game for the Golden Lions last week. He had nine tackles and six solos, and he's already making a big impact in this game this year. Let's take another look. Yeah, good slow-mo here. Pops up. Obviously, it's clear there. And just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, all first And he tries to grab it. He gets tips once, tip twice, and defend it right on it. Yeah. Yeah, you can see Skelton fired over the middle. He had plenty of time, and I think he was trying to hit Cameron Mackey. Yeah, and, and that Mackey second tip. Right actually there. had his hands on it. Yeah, when Mackey went back to grab it, couldn't haul it in. Bounce right in the defender's hands. And there's certainly nothing there at all that could show you it hit the ground at all. Well, from every look we've seen so far, there's nothing conclusive that that ball hit the ground. I mean, that it looked like it went right there, and Connor and made a fine defensive play. Yeah, I agree. So this should, this should, uh, and, and what, a, what, a, what a play for Pine Bluff, right? Puts them right back into, the, into their situation. They threw an interception a minute ago. Uh, probably got down just a bit now they are basically right back in business uh deep in jaguars territory and looking to score well you know the offense had just misfired and here you go with the defense coming up with a big play to give you the football right back you know that's the whole thing why coaches the always review, the ruling on the field stands the first and ten times up that's why coaches always tell you never give up on a play, never stop till the whistle blows. It's one of those things right there. And you never do it in a game. You just win each play, win each play, and you look at the scoreboard later, right? You know, you have to keep going. And I tell you, both these teams are so relentless. If you look at how it unfolded last week, they both had big comebacks in the fourth quarter. Arkansas Pine Bluff won their game, and Southern came up just a little short in theirs. But neither team has any quit in them. Oh, no doubt. 
Shannon Patrick back at quarterback. A huge hole for Taylor Porter, the 5'10", 202-pound senior from Florida. He was a first-team preseason all-swack player coming into this year. Of course, he was all-swack last year. And we mentioned before that he, he led the conference in rushing with 1,220 yards last season. And uh, he's off to a big start here in the second quarter. Yeah, Gift one. goes to Porter again, and this time he's going to be stopped after a short game. Yeah, sorry about that. The previous play, though, I think what he showed so well there was an absolute explosion. He saw a hole, and he just blew right through it. Kyle McGregor on the tackle. Game of two brings up second down and eight. I think Porter's lost his shoe there, so he's coming out. <laughs> his shoe can't keep up with him. So Porter goes out to take care of the shoe, and Omar Allen, number 26, checks in. And that is because Keyshawn Williams will not play in this game tonight. He has a knee injury. The handoff goes to Omar Allen. And he's in for an Arkansas Pine Bluff touchdown. How about that? His first carry, the 5'9", 180-pounder from Pine Bluff. Omar Allen, the freshman, takes it in for a touchdown. He kind of love that, huh? Gets his chance going in there. <laughs> Porter loses his shoe, and Allen comes in there says, I got you, man. I'm going to go right in for the score. I'll take care of this one. Yeah, that worked out pretty good for Omar Allen. You know, Porter carried the mail all the way down there until you get close. And then Omar Allen, the freshman from Pine Bluff, takes it in for the touchdown. Zach Pizniska is on to attempt the extra point. And his kick is, up, and kick is, is up, and it is good. But check out Omar Allen slipping tacklers, and he's in for a touchdown for the Golden Lions. We're going to pause for a timeout. 12-14 to go in the second quarter. We have a ball game, 14-7. to Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Fourteen to seven, the Southern Jaguars leading the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Of course, Pine Bluff came into this game winners of three consecutive games. Southern at one and three. Pine Bluff was three and one. That last touchdown drive by Omar Allen, his touchdown, three plays, 25 yards for the touchdown after the turnover. And once again, the kickoff sails over and through the back of the end zone so the Southern Jaguars will take over the football. Jorge, if, if you're Coach Dawson Odoms, what do you tell your quarterback and you come back after the interception that led to a touchdown? I think you just say, you know, one play at a time. I mean, I think that's exactly what you have to do. You can't uh, get caught up uh, again, exactly what Pine Bluff did, right? They threw an interception, uh, they went back and got a turnover and then scored. So uh, you, you just got to win each play, win each series, and that's how you have to take it. So we have 12-14 to go here in the second quarter. The Darius Skelton turns and hands inside. And the Jaguars get a nice game by Christopher Cheney picking up the first down before Blake Connor could come on and make the stop. That's a nice hard run, and he's uh his it looks like his hands hurt just a little bit there. Well, and Christopher Cheney had gotten off to a really good start for the Jaguars. Yeah, Cheney, 47 yards rushing. Yeah, five carries on that play. He's averaging 9.4 a carry. But Southern has run the football very well here in the first half. Skelton is going to throw this time. Has some time. Cranks it deep. Has a man out there and is going to be picked off again. Sean Steele, number 12. Steele still on his feet. Coming back the other way, weaving his way through traffic before Steele is finally knocked down. But Sean Steele gives the Golden Lions two consecutive interceptions, and that ball might have been just a tad underthrown. Yeah, that was that was Skelton actually on the tackle there, if I'm if I'm correct. Uh, I think what he was he, 
to me it was a ball that was put up there the receiver kind of he was trusting his receiver to position his body enough to be able to body up that ball he kept drifting longer he thought that ball was going to go longer and therefore the defender was able to get underneath it pass was intended for tj bedford and as you can see he was drifting a little bit and it was a little underthrown because bedford was behind the defender but sean Steele. I mean, that's what he does. I mean, he leads the conference coming into this game and passes breakups. Unsportsmanlike conduct. You ain't going to be expected celebration. That's a 15-yard penalty. First down. And Coach Cedric Thomas is not going to be happy about that call. His team just made a huge turnover, the second consecutive turnover. You have the ball, and now you're penalized for excessive celebration. Yeah, that's where you got to uh, keep your keep your cool. And again, I'm not sure what they did as far as <laughs> what was too excessive about that, but uh, I guess the refs were tight tightening up on this game. But I didn't see too much excessive there going on. But here we go. So Arkansas Pine Bluff has the ball. Skyler Perry back in, and that pass will be incomplete. But a really good play by number ten. Jordan Eastling on the play for the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, they were trying to get it to Harry Ballard. Uh, just the timing was just a little bit off, and the defense read it. Again, I think I think uh, Southern is doing a great job. Whatever the coaches were teaching them this week, you can definitely see uh, they, they were coached well, and they're ready, and they're well-prepared because uh, they're reading their keys pretty aggressive here. So Skyler Perry started the game for the Golden Lions. This time he turns and hands inside. And it's number two, Taylor Porter on the carry. Calvin Lunkins is there for the stop for the Jaguars. Yeah, he just, he's a smart player. Coach talked about him, and you mentioned it earlier. He's a smart player. Uh, you could just tell he has a nose for the ball, and he just goes at it. Uh, he, he is, if he's not making the tackle, he sure is the first one there to pick the guy up making the tackle. Now, this is a big drive for that Southern University defense. Also, you know, you're trying, you're trying to come in and bail the offense out, aren't you? Right. Exactly. And you want to squash him. You don't want Pine Bluff to get too much confidence. Skyler Perry looking to pass. Blitz on the way. He's hit as he releases it. Has a man wide open. That is a nice catch by Kobe McNeil. That's another bonus. Tavius Gaines, number five, was trying to cover for the Jaguars. I'll tell you what, Skyler Perry got lit up at the end of that play, but he stood in there absolutely strong and tall through that ball. And I'll tell you what, it always feels better when you take that huge hit. It's a big, huge gain because he jumped right up excited. Yeah, and I, I think that was, uh, we didn't check that. I think that was Jeremy Brown, number six, instead of number five. The big tight end with a nice catch. So this time, Perry dances away from trouble, but he can't get away from everybody. And he's finally going to be pulled down by Joe Davis. Davis, you may remember, had that interception earlier in the ball game. Yeah, Joe Davis, 6'4", 255. So whenever you're 6'4", you get an interception. That, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> He's pretty active, too, defensively. I mean, he's uh, from a senior from New Orleans, uh, so he's been in the trenches. Yeah, defensive ends don't get, a, get interceptions a whole lot of offense. So. Second down and long for the Golden Lions, and the handoff goes to Porter, slips the tackle, and then he runs into uh, several white jerseys there led by Lunkins and company. Also in on the play, Davin Cotton, a six foot two, 180-pound freshman from Shreveport. Yeah, the last three uh, plays, Southern has done a lot of stunting on the defensive linemen and linebacker shooting gaps, and that's disrupted the plays for Pine, Pine Bluff. And again, even on the long play, they were real close to stopping that play, but uh, just a great, great pass by Perry hanging in there in the pocket. 8.55 to go here in the second quarter for the Golden Lions. Skyler Perry looking to throw, and here comes the white jerseys with the pressure, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield, and it's Joe Davis, the senior again, causing trouble in that Arkansas Pine Bluff backfield. He is having a whale of a game right there. I mean, look at the speed he showed to close down on the quarterback right there. As we take a look, they did it with a three-man rush, too, yeah. with Davis just blowing through everybody. 
So just like that, the Golden Lions are going to have to give the ball back to Southern. Number 48, Miles Piney, will be on the punt it. And there's pressure on the punter, but he gets his kick away. It hits around the 30-yard line, and it's going to bounce dead right around the 27-yard line. I think Southern was lined up offside. The is down. There's a flag on the play. There is a flag down on the play, so we will see what, it, what the call is. If it's uh, Southern offside, I guess they'll take the penalty and kick it again. Yeah, but I think they were. I think they were lined up. Uh, he certainly was in the neutral zone. Miles Piney is averaging 41 yards a kick for the Golden Lions. Well, but he's asking Southern if they want to accept it or not, so it must be on Pine Bluff, it looks like. Illegal, Illegal shift. shift. Number 28 and number four of the kicking team. That five-yard challenge will be added to the end of the kick. Southern keeps the ball. First down. So Southern will keep the ball, and they will get a little extra yardage for that illegal motion penalty. So the Jaguars find themselves with a 14-7 lead with 7.46 to go. And I hear some echo. <laughs> All right, big job for Southern here. They, they, now they got a 7.46 in the second quarter here. And can they make that defensive stand stand by getting some points on the board here? Darius Skelton has gone all the way at quarterback for the Jaguars. He is in the backfield again. Skelton turns and hands it over to Ben, who cuts back. And that Arkansas Pine Bluff defense is strong inside. Paul Reeves, number 35, one of the black jerseys there to make the stop. Jaguars wouldn't mind taking a little time off of that clock as it ticks down from 7.22 to go here in the second quarter. Handoff inside to Ben, and he just keeps powering his way forward. Ben picks up another nice gain and a first down for the Southern Jaguars. Kobe Wyatt's Watts over there to make the stop what? for Arkansas Pine Bluff. He had a seam to his right and could have taken it. Instead, he just created his own seam and just ran over some people to get the first down. So that's going to be... That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. That one will go against the Southern Jaguars, and that will put him back five. You know, both these teams have, have played, despite the penalties and the turnover, the turnovers, they played with a lot of boys because they have not let those turnovers get them down. They've come back, and both teams have responded after turnovers. Yeah, they made, they made, them, made them pay. I think that's important. Skelton again, hands inside, and it's Ben again. And, boy, there's a whole lot of black jerseys there, too. Yeah, that was a don't tread on the uh, defense right there. They were not going to go up that middle. They were trying to run right up off the, the guard's tail on the right side, and there was no room at all. Jakari McKinney and Rashad Clayton in there to make the stop for the Golden Lions. So now it's second down and long for Southern, second and about 14 yards to go for the first down. Skelton looking to throw, comes back the opposite way, and you talk about a fine defensive play by Kobe Watts. You know, we've, we've seen it happen on the southern side a couple of times, and now you see it on the Arkansas Pine Bluff side where they read the play, what they're going to run on offense, and they're right there on the spot. Yeah, again, and, and you have to, as a coach, you just love those moments because it's exactly what you're coaching. You've looked at the film, and now your guys are doing exactly what they're supposed to do, responding. It's going to be a third down and about 15 yards to go. Looked like it might have been a loss of one on the play. we got four, 541 to go here in the first half as the officials try to line them up again. There's no foul for illegal substitution. The, sub, the offense is substituted. Therefore, the defense must be allowed to match up. So no penalty on the play. So Southern will come up and they will have that third and long to deal with and we'll see what Ladarius Skelton can come up with uh, so far you'd have to say his homecoming has been all good for him oh yeah he, he showed up like I said we said at the top of the show this guy's a winner he finds ways to win and he certainly has done it here at Pine Bluff wow. Skelton looking to throw it 
has some time and he has a man open slips the tackler and he gets downfield that is number 14 tj bedford with the gain and he has the first down for the jaguars as they continue to move the football 514 to go here in the first half as the clock ticks down skelton gets his team back at the line of scrimmage hands it off to ben sweeps to the left side and he's going to be taken down but we do have another flag on the play we'll see that came after ben was near the sideline yeah we've had a pretty clean game up to the last few minutes here a lot of flags have been flying before the offense that's a 10 yard penalty still first down jeremiah abbey the 6'4", 325-pounder from Atlanta was the guilty party on that one, so that will back the Jaguars up. Yeah, that, that's an Alka Seltzer moment for the sidelines <laughs> uh, <laughs> of Southern there. Well, because they were on the move, so they have a, they had, you know, that's going to back them up a little bit and bring up a first down and about 20 to go for another first down. So Skelton. Looking to dump off the screen pass. He has Ben. Ben has some room to go. Nice move there as he cuts inside. And that's how you get a big chunk of that penalty yardage back as Isaac Peppers made the stop. Now watch Jonathan Bishop here, the offensive guard. He pulls around. Look at him. Stays on his block. That is hard for a big man to stay on a guy like that. That's what allowed that play to progress. Boy, you're 100% right about that because usually it's a big guy pulling around the corner trying to get a little defensive back. Yeah. And, uh, boy, he showed some great feet on that play. So a nice gain. He's going to bring up second and eight. And this time, no room to roam inside at all. Christopher Cheney, but he's met in the backfield. Number 28 on the carry, Christopher Cheney. Jalen Stewart, one of the Golden Lions there for the stop. Yeah, Cheney's had some room today. Not right there, though. It was 47 yards on the day. So Skelton looks to the sideline for the play, and up to this point, Chinnis Berry, the offensive coordinator, has called a wheel of a game for the Jaguars. I mean, he's done a good job of moving the ball up and down the field. Skelton looking to pass. Has some time. Now he does it. Throws it, and it's going to be incomplete. Had an open man over the middle. He would have been very close to the first down. That was Hunter Register, but he could not hang on to the pass. Blake Connor covered. Yeah, look at the look at the pocket there that the, the linemen provide for Skelton. Uh, and again, actually, Skelton just got nervous. He couldn't believe how much time he actually had. Now, it did start collapsing right there at the end, but they gave him the nice. When you're a quarterback, you want that front of you clean, and that's exactly what they did. And they'll line up for the punt here. Cesar Baraja on the punt. The 6'1", 225-pound junior from Florida into punt. Tyron Ralph, number seven, goes back to return. And the ball goes, Ralph lets it bounce. And it will travel into the end zone, and that will be a touchback for the Golden Lions. Time for us to pause for a timeout with the Southern Jaguars leading the Golden Lions from Arkansas Pine Bluff, 14-7, with 3.21 to go. Just don't forget the tag, rookie. Carhartt, we've got your back 24-7. We have 321 to go here in the first half in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Southern leading Arkansas Pine Bluff 14-7, but Pine Bluff on the attack. Shannon Patrick with a complete pass over to the outside, and that is a nice gain right there by the Golden Lions on the attack. Yeah, but they're going to be in a hurry, but they don't need to be in too much of a hurry. you got plenty of time. They need to make sure they're deliberate and execute. That was Josh Wilkes in his first game this year in a long time. He's had a hamstring issue, and he made a nice pickup on the play. And the pass once again goes out to the sidelines, back to Wilkes again. And, and Coach told us, expect to see Josh on the field making some big plays. Yeah, and they, and they show trust in him, too. At key moments of the game, you go right to a guy and played all season. You get him the ball real quick. So that's going to move to change upfield for a first down for Arkansas Pine Bluff. So just like that, the Golden Lions are on the move with 2.53 to go, and he goes back to the same play again, and the ball comes out. 
but it's out of bounds, and so that was would have been a fumble, but he was he used the outs the sideline as his friend on that play. I'm trying to see where they marked the ball out there. They did give him the catch. About a four yard gain, so I could just do a nice run there, a nice quick run. Not much time goes off the off the clock either. Patrick at quarterback bobbled the snap a little bit, but got it over near the sidelines again. This time to Henry Ballard. And I think the Golden Gary Lions have found something over there that they want to work with. Lunkins and Eastling over there to make the stop for the Jaguars. Remember, Pine Bluff doesn't have but one timeout, if I'm correct here. They used two earlier in the game. That is correct. So Coach Cedric Thomas trying to use the clock wisely as he works it downfield, using that sideline to his advantage. Yeah, it's a big third down and four here. This time, Patrick turns, hands inside, and a good run forward. Should have picked up the first down for the Golden Lions. He's very close. Davin Cotton on the stop for the Jaguars, but that will move the chains, and nice move by Coach Cedric Thomas and his staff crossing up the Jaguars. Yeah, and I, I think that was a big first down, too, and I think you'll see Pine Bluff get more aggressive now that that first down. Clock continues to roll. 155 to go here in the first half. Patrick with a fake to the outside, throws down the sidelines, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it over to Josh Wilkes again, number three. Casey on the play, number 16 for Southern. Yeah, tell me they weren't excited to get him back in the lineup. A key moment of the game at the end of the half. And you find him, what, four or five times? You're, he's your target? Yeah, Josh Wilkes, a 6'3", 184-pound junior, has been bothered by hamstring injuries, but he looks pretty good so far tonight. They're testing him out, and he looks really good. Yeah, three catches, 17 yards. Second down and 10 for the Golden Lions. Shannon Patrick looking to throw on the slant route, and it's going to be dropped by Ballard. He had a lot of room to roam right there, and that might be just a uh, loss of concentration inside because he put it on him. Yeah, it's one of those things receivers, coaches, uh, not very happy with that. you got to bring your hands to the ball. He, he did the worst thing, let it get to his pads, and it just kind of bounced off there. You know, he's one of their best receivers, too. Last week, seven catches for 112 yards. And he even had a rushing touchdown in that ball game, so he doesn't drop many. Yeah, he'll you make see, it up. Yeah, <laughs> he'll make it up. <laughs> that guy drop a ball. It's a rare occasion. It's like one of these eclipse things because he he doesn't <laughs> drop the ball at all. He dropped that one. So that will bring up third down for the Golden Lions. Patrick under pressure, ducks inside, has a man open, and it's a completed pass to Tyron Ralph. Well, nice catch by Ralph inside. And a big first down right there for the Golden Lions. He did a great job of stepping up into the pocket. His line gave him some room forward, so he threw that ball going forward, not off his back foot, and he was very accurate with that. That's a very good call because Ralph is not that big down there. He's 5'8", 161, kind of a tough guy to find in the secondary, but he had that clear line of vision right there where he could pick him out. And again, most people won't give a lot of credit to the offensive line there, but, but when you create that packed pocket and you're able to clear defenders around you so your quarterback's got a clear shot of the receivers, that makes a huge difference, and he's able to step forward, follow through with the pass. So the clock is ticking down. We're down to 128, 125 as the Golden Lions try to get set on offense. Waiting for the play to come from the sidelines. They Offensive have time, coordinator <laughs> Jermaine Gales. Uh, Shannon Patrick in at quarterback. Puts a man in motion. Dumps it off to Porter again. He juggled it for a second. And he doesn't go out of bounds. He had an opportunity to stop the clock, but he did not go out of bounds. The Kavion champion made the stop, but uh, that's going to allow the clock to continue to tick. 48 seconds and counting. Yeah, he'll be he'll be uh, won't be happy with that move later because you only have one timeout. You got to you got to save it. You can't waste it. Well, it's taking a long time to get the play in from the sideline, and I'm sure this is not what Coach Thomas wanted to see. The clock continues to tick. Thirty seconds to go here in the first half. Patrick's going to throw it, looking deep, and it's going to be knocked down. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did. It's intercepted. Number 10, Jordan Eastling. 
And uh, Coach Thomas and his team, they had some problems with the clock there, and that may have uh, contributed to the whole situation. But another interception by Patrick, his second interception of the first half, that one's in the end zone. So that's going to be a huge turnover right there. Yeah, you could feel the tension before that ball was snapped. They knew they needed to move the ball quick, and I think they, uh, once they just called the play, they just just didn't take their time through the play, threw it short, got intercepted. And they had such a good drive going there. Now we have 20 seconds to go here in the first half, and do you expect Southern just to take a knee and take this one to the house? Sure, you're deep. 20 seconds left, you just take a knee. Well, of course, you're not under center, so you're going to have to move it forward. <laughs> Skelton hands it off to Ben, and he finds a hole and crawls into it, and the clock's going to tick down. We have 10 seconds to go here in the first half, and the Jaguars have the lead, so they are in no hurry to get well, another playoff. Two, one, and that will do it for the first half. And what an exciting first half it was. We saw just about everything as the Southern Jaguars finds themselves out in front leading by a touchdown. But we know Arkansas Pine Bluff is explosive, but how about that turnover? A lot of exciting plays in the first half. We will pause for a timeout now and return to second half action. Miles Evans out there. And welcome to a beautiful night in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Beautiful country here. You know, I, I really enjoyed the drive to the stadium today. Butch Alcindor, Jorge Vargas, and we're watching the Southern Jaguars who've made the trip up from Baton Rouge, Louisiana to take on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff, a team that have come into this ball game, winners of three consecutive games, and the first half was not disappointing at all. When you look at it, one of the things Coach Dawson Odoms told us when we talked to him earlier this week, the Southern head coach, he said, we must get off to a fast start, and they did. Yeah, whatever the medicine or the remedy, he said we were, he, he told us he was trying different things each week to figure out how they could get out of the gate quicker, and they certainly did. But I want to say something about both teams. I think both teams have done a really good job of execution and it shows really well to the coaching staffs of both schools that they have done a lot of preparation because you can tell several parts of the game, offensively and defensively, that there are good reads being made, whether it's a yeah. running back making a great cut or a quarterback making a great throw, and certainly defensively, you've seen them snuff out a play and say, that's a screen, I've got you, you're not coming here. So I think coaching-wise, you've really seen some great preparation on both sides of the ball. And both teams had their opportunities in the first half. We want to mention just a little bit, talk about Ladarius Skelton, because this is a homecoming for the Southern quarterback. He went to high school in Pine Bluff. You know, he won a lot of ball games in Pine Bluff, and he would love to come home and win tonight. Right now, his team is leading 14-7 to at the half. Oh, yeah, he, he's not used to you. Look at the Pine Bluff band. Uh, I don't, if that doesn't get your blood flowing, I don't know what does. <laughs> I think we're going to check some of this out, and let's go to break, right? Yes, sir. 14-7, to Southern leading. We'll be back with more in just a minute. The AL Wild Card Game, Wednesday at 8 on ESPN. We are at the half here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where the Southern Jaguars are leading the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions 14-7 to after a very exciting first half. So let's go and take a look at some of the action from the first half if we can. Butch Alcindor along with Jorge Vargas. And we saw a little bit of everything here in the first half, including Ladarius Skelton, who was coming back home and ran that four-yard touchdown. Uh, great job. Again, we talked about it earlier, relying on your offensive line, patient, with the little cut back there, and then look at this one. And that was Gerard Sims banging in for another touchdown for the Jaguars, 14-0 at that point. And then the defense turned things around for Pine Bluff. Sean Steele with the interception. But Shannon Patrick gives it right back on the other end. His pass into the end zone is picked, and then uh, this is a great play. <laughs> That's living right. That's living right. The ball comes right back in you. As a defender, you're playing well, and the ball comes right back, and you don't let it touch the ground. Blake Connor with the interception, and then it's the freshman, Omar Allen, taking it in for a touchdown for Pine Bluff, and that takes us to where we are. 14-7, Shannon Patrick knocking on the door. Had another chance for points, 
and it's another interception in the first half. If you look at it, Arkansas Pine Bluff had three interceptions in the first half, and that hurt their ability to get points. Yeah, co it drives coaches absolutely nuts when you get turnovers. And we have five in the game. All of them are interceptions, three for Southern and uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, actually the other way around, too. Look at the rushing attack. Southern has done a great job rushing the football. Passing yards go to Arkansas Pine Bluff, though. Yeah, a lot of offense. You know, what we didn't see is as many much scores as we thought we'd see. Right? We thought we'd be in the evolution of like uh, yeah. seven, 70 points. I mean, we got a tight game here. And again, and that's because we talked about earlier. Both sides of the ball on both teams are executing in different levels, right? And that's the interceptions, giving the ball back to their offense. So it's it's been a nice game. It's been a nice game with the Southern Jaguars leading. 14-7 to 7 at the break as the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff Band marches on. We will pause for a timeout and come back with second-half action. Southern leading 14-7. to 7. Evans pits to Robinson, and he's drilled by the line of scrimmage back down. With those turnovers backwards. Australia's own Robert Whitaker isn't just coming home. He's coming to defend the middleweight title. Buy it on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Division one body type, terrific leverage. <laughs> Wallace, Lincoln Davis, shotgun back, right to each way. And we're just about ready to get the second half underway between the Southern Jaguars and the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. We're sitting with Southern with a 14-7 lead. And, and Jorge, as you look at some of the scoring drives in the first half, first drive, Southern goes 12 plays in 83 yards in 4 minutes 20 seconds. Then after the turnover, it was a gift. Six plays, 34 yards in 215. And then the Omar Allen touchdown, the 13 yard for the freshman that came on a what was really a nice drive for Arkansas Pine Bluff three plays 25 yards also after a turnover yeah I, I think the big key for really both teams quite frankly is take care of the ball quarterbacks right you've had five interceptions right Pine Bluff at three uh, you know uh, Southern has thrown two you've got to take care of the ball the penalties that they've had, both teams got a little sloppy somewhere in that second quarter, but it didn't really hurt the teams. The teams tended to overcome those, but these interceptions can obviously really cost you. And for, for Pine Bluff, it was twice, you know, in the in deep in Southern territory, you throw an interception like that, and the ball was short. You got to be more careful with the ball. And, and, and as receivers, you got to challenge your receivers. You're the receivers coach saying, look, that ball's short. You got to come back and get it, knock it down. You've got to play defender. Tell me a little bit about Ladarius Skelton and his homecoming. 10-16 to 16 for 100 yards. His top receiver was T.J. Bedford, who had six catches for 62 yards. Well, I think poise. I mean, you know, you talk, we talk so much about him being a winner. He just has poise. He looks confident in there, whether it's – and what I like is he's always looking down the field, despite him being an incredible athlete that can run the ball, right? He's a great thrower that can run the ball not I'm a runner that happens to throw a ball and I think that's a big difference uh, in the way he handles himself you can tell the team has a lot of confidence in him uh, you know just certainly a uh, very talented quarterback are you surprised at the success Southern had running the ball when you look at the stats and you see Ben Devon Ben 
number two. He had 13 carries for 56 yards, and then Cheney comes off the bench, six carries for 47 yards. Yeah, it's impressive, and again, a lot of that credit goes to that offensive line. I mean, no, the backs are obviously getting it done, but you've got an offensive line that's really creating some seams, and when it's not there, those backs go ahead and make it. They truck it, right? You know, no, there's no hole, boom. I just go in and get my one yard and be done with it. Uh, but the offensive line for Southern, I think, have been really impressive, quite frankly, in the run game and then also uh, in the passing game because in the passing game they've done a nice job of creating a good pocket for the quarterback. And we're going to take a look at Ladarius Skelton because, as I said, he had a lot of success here in Pine Bluff, so he was excited to come back home. But you see how calm he looks right there? And, and you, you see right there he throws a strong ball. It got tipped. It still went right to his receiver, right? I mean, he's just got a strong arm, and he knows his receivers can do something with it. He looks confident, stands tall, right? He's not shying away, backing out. He didn't throw off his heels a lot, even when he's got some pressure in the front. But, again, his offensive line has done a nice job of not allowing anyone in his face. I'm surprised that uh, we didn't see more of Jamar Washington in the first half for Southern. The 5'7", 165 receiver, pound receiver, Last week, in that loss to FAMU, he had five receptions for 109 yards and a touchdown, and he was a big threat. And I think maybe we didn't see him. And I'll see what you think about this, because they had so much success running the football, they really didn't have an opportunity to, to, to spread it around passing. Well, maybe they're trying to just dull Pine Bluff and make him uh, not not be aware till the second half. But uh, they've been spreading the ball around real nice. And, again, I think Pine Bluff has done a nice job as well. I mean, I think, you know, they're off it. Besides the turnovers, they've moved the ball they've had some success so we'll see what uh, both teams bring to the table but again turnovers are going to hold they're going to it's going to win the game or lose the game for you here and of course it's just a seven point game we we already talked about it on the top but with four seconds to go last week in that game against tennessee state shannon patrick took his team on a drive and tossed a touchdown pass a 17 yard td pass for the game winning score and they came back and won it on the last play of the game. So you can never count that team out, and they will get the football first to start the second half. Oh, yeah. There will be no quit by either team in this game. And, again, it's a, it's a great competitive game. What a way to start off the SWAC uh, for Southern and Pine Bluff. Uh, they get this win. Either team, this is a huge win. I think most people don't, you know, may not realize. I mean, you, th these conference games, they matter a lot in the West. And you've got to take care of your business. Cesar Baraja, and we are underway in the second half. And once again, these kickers are doing an outstanding job on the kickoffs, putting that ball in the end zone and setting up a touchback. We, we have not seen much going on on the kickoff return. Yeah, they, they, they don't want to take a chance at all. Let's put it back there. We'll start at the 25. So Arkansas Pine Bluff will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. We'll see who comes back on at quarterback to start the second half. And it looks like Skylar Perry back in the ball game. He started for the Golden Lions, so they start first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Perry hands it inside. It's Porter, and Porter picks up about three yards. And he is knocked down right there by Lunkins and Harris. Benjamin Harris, number 18, assisting on the tackle. So right away, Arkansas Pine Bluff goes to the run, and it was Porter picking up pretty close to four yards on that carry. Coach Cedric Thomas, I mentioned at the top, he's on in his second year, two and nine last year, but four of those games were losses by a touchdown or less. So this team was very capable last year, and they're off to a great start this year. Handoff goes to Porter again, breaks the tackle, and he's upended by Callup Carter. He brought some wood on that one. 6'1", 220 pounder, a big hit. Yeah, that's running into a wall right there. Caleb was just flying around there. Bam. That takes the wind out of you just watching it, actually. That's going to bring up third down for the Golden Lions. Third and short, about two yards to go for the first down. Skyler Perry turns, hands to Porter. He tries to move it forward, but Lunkins is there, and I don't know if he got there, Jorge. I don't think he did. And again, those line. <laughs> Calvin Lunkins, the six foot, 235 pound senior, leading the charge. Also, there's CJ Bryant. Helping out in that, apparently will force the Golden Lions into a punt. 
on to kick it away. Miles Peeney to kick it away. You know, he leads the swack in getting the punt down inside the 20. It's going to be tough to see if he can do it here. Brandon Hinton back to return the punt. And it's off the side of his foot down near the sideline. It does take an Arkansas Pine Bluff roll before it's going to be touched down at about the 27-yard line. He's averaging 41 a kick, so that wasn't necessarily his best effort on that one. Well, he did a nice job of scooping that ball up. That snap was extremely low. Actually hit off the turf a little bit. He picked it up and uh, kind of got that uh, little rugby style uh, punt style of his going there. And what, what uh, Southern did a great job was is uh, get away from the ball. It wasn't going to be returned. Get away from it. Run away. So the Jaguars with their first possession of the second half. Skelton on the option and he bounces it. He was trying to pitch it off right there. It looks like it was registered over there. Uh, Blake Connor provided the defense. It was actually Washington. Jamar Washington, the young man we talked about who did not get involved in the first half and they tried to get him busy early in the second half. Second down coming up for the Jaguars. Skelton with a little half roll to his right. Tosses it out to the sidelines. He has a man. That's B.J. Bedford. And Bedford's going to be taken down by Sean Steele. Caught him and hanging on there for dear life. Yeah, good short, good, good, great tackling there. You just don't let up. He got some help from his other teammates. Paul oh, Reeves oh, also assisting. So now, just like that, the Jaguars have their third down. Third down for the Southern Jaguars. Skelton has gone all the way at quarterback. Looking to throw. Has a lot of time. Now he doesn't. Rolls out. Dumps it off underneath to Ben. And he's going to pick up the first down for Southern. So just a lot of patience on the play by Skelton. What he was looking for wasn't there, but he came back underneath. Yeah, and he's just very calm. I mean, he just rolls right. He was going left. There was a lot of design to the left, and then he just comes right back to the right. Takes his time, throws an accurate pass, gets the first down. And Ben sure showing some skills, right? I mean, he's shown some tough running inside. Did a nice job with the catch there. Yeah, that was his second reception of the night. He also has 13 carries. And 56 yards rushing. He's been the main go-to guy in the backfield. Cheney also has been in there. Cheney's rushed the ball six times for 47 yards. Skelton, though, is the second leading rusher on the team. So we haven't seen him take off much tonight. Skelton turns and hands it off to Ben, who just muscles his way forward. I mean, this guy can take a licking and keep on ticking right there. <laughs> Xavier Mitchell, one of the Golden Lions, along with Paul Reeves there to get the big fella down. Ben is only 5'9", but he weighs pretty close to 200 pounds. From John Curtis out of New Orleans, that's a, a, a state championship powerhouse there. John Curtis has had many, many winning seasons. Yeah, they can play some football there for sure. Now, Southern just taking their time here, look very deliberate. Want to make sure they have the right play. Skelton turns and hands to Ben again. And he's going to be knocked down quickly in the backfield. Number 23, Artavius Washington. The 5'11", 160-pound junior made quite a play. You know, what they're doing with Jeremiah Houston at tight end for Southern there, they kind of put him as like of a wing back, and then he's cracking back, creating some of that hole there for the run. So a key down coming up for the Jaguars. It's going to be third and about three as they Hot bring in Summer continues at the GSU Homecoming Concert on Wednesday, October 16th, starring Megan Thee Stallion and Little TJ and featuring Quando Rondo at the VSU Multipurpose Center. Don't miss one of the hottest Fresh concerts this fall. Knocked out of his hands. Tickets are on sale on the now and, and can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com or at the Tri-City Designs box office located at the VSU Multipurpose Center. The VSU Homecoming Concert starring Megan Thee Stallion and Little TJ featuring Quando Rondo. Rondo, Wednesday, October 16th. There's a big lion paw for sure. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your man, Mike Yes, And we coming Hard right back at you. Yes, sir. If you ever came on the blitz the on the top of your screen, true. watch it right there. The top of your screen, he reaches out, and he just got a little piece of that football. Great job. A great awareness for Southern falling on the ball. 
How do you like the uh, Golden Lions dialing up the blitz on a key third down? I think that's what you need to do. You need to, if you're predictable, you get in trouble. Raha to punt it away, and that one may have been blocked. I, I think it was tipped also. It's going to be a very short punt, so the Golden Lions will take over with excellent field position, but that's two plays in a row that Arkansas Pine Bluff came with the pressure, and it appeared to pay off. And now the officials are going to talk about something. Let's take another look, Jorge. Check that flag on the play. Yeah, it got hit for sure. It's hard to tell who that was, but it certainly got hit. And you can see the rotation change on the ball. Yep. So early here in the third quarter with 9.33 to go, you see the Arkansas Pine Bluff defense stepping up with two big defensive plays. Okay, there was a, a penalty against Pine Bluff, it looked like. It must have been against Southern because they just reeled off five yards down instead of the 25 and set the 30-yard line. I'm not quite sure what the penalty was, but it was against Southern, and Pine Bluff's taking the ball at 30. Yeah, the Golden Lions will start in excellent field position. Ball is at the 30. Skyler Perry, still the quarterback, 6'3", 215 from New Orleans also. Passing out near the sidelines. He completes it. Nice catch on the play. He's throwing in a tight window for sure. That is Dewan, Dewan Miller, the 6'2", 183-pound sophomore. Excuse me. And now we have whistles again on the field. We have an injured player. One of the Jaguars is down and. You know, we, 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 we didn't talk much about it at the top, but it is a hot and steamy night here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And that is Jalen Ivey, number 96, who appears to be suffering from, appears to be cramping up on the plane. That's exactly what it looks like that cap <laughs> said I'm tired. I'm not working. <laughs> you know, we... we uh, it's just hot and no wind blowing at all. When we started the game, it was about 95, 96. Right now, it's dropped down to about 81, but it's still pretty humid out on that field. So we, we may see more of this coming up here in the second half of, of guys cramping up and having to leave the field. But that's the first one we've seen, so that shows the conditioning of both teams as well, though. So I think that, uh, that's certainly the first time we've seen it so far this game, so that shows how, how well conditioned these guys are. Second down and two for the Golden Lions. It's going to be, it's going to be a second and two for the Golden Lions now. Skyler Perry at quarterback. Nice fake. He has a lot of time going to crank it deep. And he overshoots his man. So, both, so far tonight, both quarterbacks for the Golden Lions have been just a little bit off. Pass yeah, and, he, and again, I think the, the tough he's part is as a quarterback, you're going to go back and look at the tape and say, you know, I had this guy open. I could have, you know, a lot of times you want to throw a guy open. These guys are open. You just need to, to, to get it up there and let them make it a little bit of adjustment. Uh, but it wasn't, it just wasn't good enough. Just didn't get enough air under that one. So Skyler Perry turns and he hands it off to Porter and it's not much room inside. Lunkins again. Up there Stop quickly, the, the senior Lundkins. from New Orleans, Calvin Lunkins, making another stop for and that Jaguars the defense. Lions. First down 10 from their own 40 yard line. So he got just enough for the first down. Wasn't a lot of room inside, but enough room for Porter to pick up the first down. So the Arkansas Pine, Pine Bluff Golden Lions will start first and 10 with the ball resting right on the 40 yard line. Yeah, Porter 14 carries 49 yards. Skyler Perry has gone all the way so far in the second half. Again, he has plenty of time, throws it low, and the catch is made by number five, Col Colby, McNeil. To number five Colby McNeil. Nice catch right there. Four on the play brings up second down and six. Jacoby Jones making the stop for the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, the Texans had a wide receiver named Jacoby Jones also a while back. The Houston Texans did. We remember him well. Yeah. And then once again, Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions, trying to run it up the middle, and there is nothing there. As Dab Cotton 
and Jordan Lewis just would not give up anything inside. Uh, that was, yeah, that was, that was squashed. Now we're looking at a third down and five for the Golden Lions, and, and they've done a little bit of everything here in the second half. They've had a good mix of run and pass, so they could pretty much dial up anything they want on this play. Perry calling out the signals, puts his man in motion, looks for the quick pass, throws it back to the motion man, and he's going to be knocked down short of the first down. Number six, Jeremy Brown, the big tight end, just really could not get going. Montavious Gaines makes the play for the Southern Jaguars. And you will remember on our call with Coach Odoms, he talked about Montavious Gaines, he said he wanted to see him have a big game this this week. Well, he obviously did his homework because, again, we've talked about this several times, players on both sides of the field knowing exactly what's coming and being there and then making the play. And so that just, again, reiterate that the, the coaches are doing a great job getting these guys ready. And the punt is away, and it's going to be short. There was heavy pressure coming. Brandon Hinton was deep, but once again, First it was the Golden Lions, now it's the Jaguars putting pressure now on the punter. The winning ticket number. Yeah, that, that punt didn't look good coming off his foot. You know, sometimes though when you dial up that pressure and you just sometimes you just have to get in their face to kind of disrupt things in the backfield and uh, that may have happened. We have 628 to go here in the third quarter, and so far. Not a lot of offense going on. Both teams stepping up on the defensive end. No, it's impressive because we know both sides have some amazing offensive weapons, and that just tells you how great these defenses are playing. The Darius Skelton back for the Jaguars. Takes his time, has a man wide open. That's Bedford, and he's dragged down from behind, but a good play. Sean Steele on the tackle. You know that? Steele had an interception in the first half playing some solid defense. Yeah, and I was going to say that just before that play is that both sides of the defense, and Steele in particular, has made some great open field tackles. He's been very consistent, and that's why these offense haven't lit up. Normally they rely on some missed tackles, and they blow up. Skelton fakes it inside, throws it near the sidelines. That is complete right there to Mackey, who slips the tackler and dives forward for some extra yardage on the play. Rico Merriweather coming in to finish him off but a nice play by cam Mackey. Yeah, his helmet goes off so he's got to take it to the sidelines for at least one play and as we see the jaguars coming back up there and they they're starting to pick up that tempo again here in the third quarter they were going at a slower tempo when the quarter got underway but you can see skelton getting his team back to the line of scrimmage this time he fires again near the sidelines has a man Pass is complete to Hinton. Pass to oh, it's, it's ruled off now. They ruled it in. And now they're going to wipe it away. You're right on that one, Jorge. It was Isaac Peppers over there defending for the Golden Lions. Check that last pass incomplete. That brings up second down and 10 for the Jags from the Golden Lions 37. So with 528 to go, the Jaguars will come out with a second and ten after the incompleted pass. It'll be interesting if you see an out and up come real quick because there have been a lot of short passes on the side there. Tries to run the screen and it goes nowhere. The pass to Jamar Washington, but the Golden Lions were all over that one. You talk about some film study at work. He had no place to go. Kobe Watts on the stop. Yeah, my. But how about holding on to that ball, getting hit as you're catching the ball? That, that's just tough. Golden Lions have done a really good job of finding out where number six is and keeping him from being making a big play in this ball game. I mean, you look at him last week, he was one of their impact players, and so far tonight, not much going on for Jamar Washington. So Skelton again fires, has a man wide open, and a nice completed pass on the play. That's the first down, too. Number 24, Brandon Hinton. 
Hot Girl Summer continues at the VSU Homecoming Concert Alabama. on Wednesday, October 16th, starring Megan Thee Stallion the and Little TJ, and featuring Quando Rondo at the VSU Multipurpose Center. And Don't miss one of the hottest concerts this fall. Tickets are on sale now and can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com or at the Tri-City Design Parts Office, located at the VSU Multipurpose Center. The VSU Homecoming Concert starring Megan Thee Stallion and Little TJ, featuring Quando Rondo, Wednesday, October 16th. I have to say, just uh. What's up, uh, y'all? It's your man, Mike, yeah. And we coming right uh, back at the 2019 the with, with the funniest is true. The execution is really good. Nice fake by Skelton. He goes the other way. Now he pulls it down. He has nothing but daylight in front of him. And he races home for his second <laughs> touchdown of the night. But Darius Skelton says, welcome home, Pine Bluff, as he takes it in for his second touchdown. Impressive. Uh, again, you know, he was really looking to pass. He wasn't looking to run. Uh, he did two different tries, looked for three different receivers. And then when he made his move, it was like three different moves that freed him up. And then it was open sailing. And once he saw that, that lane, it was over. Well, it all started with the fake. Yeah. You know, he faked our camera guy out there. He faked us and everybody. Then he kept rolling around to the right as the extra point comes on. And it is good. And just like that, the Southern Jaguars adding to their lead. We're in the third quarter, and Southern leads it 21-7 over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Just don't forget the tag, rookie. Carhartt, we've got your back 24-7. At the stop and the stem show, there's a lot to enjoy. Cue the full schedule of events at UAPB. And the Southern Jaguars now lead the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions 21-7. We have 348 in the third to go. The Southern Jaguars just finished off a seven-play, 55-yard drive. Took them two minutes and 40 seconds before Ladarius Skelton ran 19 yards for the touchdown. And second half kickoff is underway, and the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions, after that touchback, will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. What about that drive, Jorge? I mean, that was a pretty impressive drive right there by the Jaguars. Oh, yeah. I mean, just uh, like I said, execution has been great, and they were patient. Uh, at no time, but they looked rushed. And, and again, I mean, you got a, a quarterback skeleton that just uh, took what the defense gave him, and then at the end, Again, he was trying to throw the ball, wound up running it in. You know, Southern returned 16 starters this year from that team that were the champions in the West. Nine of those starters were on offense, so they have an awful lot of experience on offense. And, and you could tell they're comfortable with each other, and I think that's what we've said a couple of times. They look patient, right? And I think because you're familiar with your surroundings there, you are patient because you know you can rely on your teammates. So Shannon Patrick checks in at quarterback. He has two picks in this game, and he hands to Tyron Ralph. And Ralph around the right side, and he picks up a nice gain for the Golden Lions. That will be a first down, so he moves the stick right off the bat. Montavious Gaines, number five, over there to make the stop for the Jaguars. You can see the speed there. Yeah, Tyron Ralph showing that speed to make the edge, and that's a little wrinkle. We didn't see that much in the first half from the Golden Lions, and that's something that was a good play to pick up a first down and a, and a drive that they would love to put some points on the board. And we have movement up front, and it looked like the Jaguars jumped, but were they drawn offsides? That's the big play. Davin Cotton was yeah, the think, guy that moved first. I think that's on Southern. And on that reverse, let's just talk a little bit about that. I think what they're doing is because Southern's been doing such a great job pursuing to the ball, they want to slow them down a little bit. So you run a counter play or a reverse play where you make Southern have to just take that extra second moment to, to make sure the ball's going a certain way. Defense onside, number 54 on the defense, that's a 5 yard penalty. With the clock on the way, we need to the game clock. The 3-0-9. Clock is on the way. Yeah, he was just knocking on the door. Hello, anyone in? <laughs> anyone here? <laughs> yeah, and it didn't look like Patrick had a hard count either. I mean, I'm not sure what was going on on that. Uh, well, I, I had a coach that always used to say, if you're going to do it, do it full speed. So he did. <laughs> he was coming. <laughs> hey, you know, if you got to come, come. Yep. And there it goes. A fire's a strike from Patrick, but a big hit by the Jaguars. 
Catcher's pass is complete to Erie Ballard. Southern defense making a nice play on them. He's trying to hit Ballard, and Ballard, he's been pretty quiet tonight. We haven't heard a lot from him. Smith on the big hit. Yeah, you get hit when you're that high in the air, it's going to hurt coming down. But again, defensive backs keeping the receiver in front of him, making the short tackle. Both sides of the ball have done that. Both Pine Bluff has done it and Southern has done it as well. Patrick hands it off to Porter, has some room along the outside, and Porter, a couple of nice moves there before he's finally dragged down near the sideline. Number 50, Kyle McGregor with some help from Benjamin Harris. Nice first down. But the Golden Lions move the sticks. Coach Cedric Thomas watching his teams navigate down the field. Back-to-back first downs on this drive. Ball now resting near midfield around the 48. Patrick with a lot of time to throw. Dumps it off underneath, and it's incomplete. You know, he was looking downfield the whole time, tried to go back to Ballard, and that's a probably good move by the Golden Lions because they want to go to one of their main guys. Oh, and Ballard almost made it over an incredible catch there. And, 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 and again, that throw was only where he could catch it, so I, I like the giving your big playmaker to make that play. You know, and I like it on first down as well. Ballard, the newcomer of the week in the SWAC this week. It was the second time this year he's had that honor. I mentioned last week, seven catches for 112 yards. He even had a rushing touchdown. So this guy has some skills. Patrick with a guy wide open. That's Tyron right there with a nice catch. Number seven, Tyron Ralph. Hauling in the catch and moving the ball upfield for the Golden Lions. Should be a big third down and one here. Yeah, it's going to set up a third and short. I mean, he got close. I think he's a yard and a half shy. And they go right to the line of scrimmage. But we have a whistle on the play, and there's a timeout on the field. So while this sort things out on the field, we will pause here with the Jaguars leading 21-7. to Liberty. We're ready to resume action. Third down and one for the Golden Lions from the Jags, 43. One, and thank you for watching tonight. You can see the Southern Jaguars leading Arkansas Pine Bluff 21-7. to But Pine Bluff is on the move. They have the football, and they have a nice little drive going. Shannon Patrick dumps it over the middle, and it was almost intercepted. He and his receiver, the big tight end, Jeremy Brown, were not on the same page. Brown never looked for the football. Watch Calvin Lukens. He comes barreling through totally messed that entire play and rhythm up for yeah. Pine Bluff. Because Brown did look back, but you're right. The pressure just destroyed the whole play. Yeah, that back wasn't about to stop him. So a fourth down coming up now for the Golden Lions. This may be the play of the second half. Patrick gives it off and it's going to be going to be very close. It's going to, I think He's it was Porter, it. and he has the first down for the Golden the Lions. Kyle area. McGregor made the stop, but not before Porter Boy, that's a huge play on fourth down. Oh, it is. It is. And especially after getting that scare on third down, right? They just lined right up. There was no hesitation on the Pine Bluff sidelines. We're going for it. And they went there and executed. What I like about Porter is he's leading the team in receiving and in rushing. Well, he can do it all. And, you know, he's not your bigger, guy, biggest back. You know, he's pretty small, 5'10", 200 pounds. But, boy, he has a lot of heart. And look at Shannon Patrick has a man open over the middle. And it's another first down for the Golden Lions from Arkansas. Pine Bluff, Dewan Miller, the freshman of the year last year, making a big catch. Lunkins again on the stop. And he put that ball right where it needed to be, too. We talked about him being a little off. That was perfect. Well, it's a fine line when you have to drop that ball in there. And that was a good pass from Patrick. Throw showed a lot of confidence on that one. This time he throws it in a crowd and has his man again. And once again, it's number 13, Dewan Miller, making the catch. Jordan Eastling made the stop, but uh, not in time to stop the completed pass by Arkansas Pine Bluff. If you want to say throw on the dime, that's what that is. Well, that the, was an incredible pass. The margin of error was very small on that play, but Shannon Patrick drilled it in there, and it's another first down for the Golden Lions. First and goal to go. Patrick looking to throw it again. Has some time. 
tries to loft one to the corner there. No good on the play. He was trying to hit Kobe McNeil. He just threw that one away. And see, I'm okay with that. If you didn't, you didn't see what you were looking for, go ahead and just get rid of the ball, launch it, get it out of there. That's when you get too cute with the ball, that's when you get in trouble. Well, and, and the, the two interceptions earlier in the game from Patrick came with his team in scoring position. So obviously he, you know, he doesn't want to do that again. It's a great move on the play. Just if the guy's not there, throw it away. That's what he did. Second down coming up for the Golden Lions. Shannon Patrick is the quarterback. He has Taylor Porter to his right. Patrick turns, gives to Porter, and he's going to be knocked down at the four-yard line. Porter just powered his way for a few yards up the middle. Kyle McGregor, number 50, is there for the stop. And that concludes the third quarter. So we will head to break now. That's the end of the quarter with Southern leading 21-7 in Pine Bluff. It is a 21-7 Southern lead here in the fourth quarter as Arkansas Pine Bluff. We're in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, but the Golden Lions are on the move. The ball is on the four-yard line. They are knocking on the door with a chance to make this a, a game. And, and, and want to tell the folks at home, keep in mind, they came from behind last week, went on a long drive to win the ball game. So no, no, no lead quit. is safe. No quit in the Golden <laughs> Lions. And, and now we got a third and four, so you know it's two downs, right? you got two downs to go. you got a guy named Tyler Porter who's been absolutely fantastic Tyler, for you. Uh, he's got 112 yards of total, right, rushing and passing, so that means you can give him the ball either way. Look for them to try to either set him up or fake and make someone bite, right? And they've already gone for it one time on fourth down on this drive, so you, like you said, we're in four-down territory here. Oh, yeah, no question about it. And, I mean, again, this drive has been probably their most significant. It's been very solid. They've been moving the ball around, and they've been aggressively passing the ball a lot more. I mean, it's attacking offense. Well, they've been down here before, and unfortunately for the Golden Lions, they've had two passes intercepted. So that's something that they don't want to think about right now as they come out of the huddle. Shannon Patrick, still the quarterback, on this drive, and they're knocking out the door. It's going to be a third down for the Golden Lions. As we said, football resting on the four. Man in motion, that's Brown, the tight end, the handoff goes to Porter, and the Jaguars are right there. Boy, what a play by that Southern defense, and we, but we do have a flag on the field. That'll stop everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what the officials are doing now. They, they, the down marker says fourth down, so maybe there's not a flag because they're right back at the line of scrimmage. So here's a big play, fourth down, goal to go for Shannon Patrick and the Golden Lions. Patrick looking to throw on the slant pass, and it goes off of the hands of his intended receiver, Ballard, inside on the slant, and he could not bring it in. The pass a little high, but a fine defensive play there. You see Patrick gunning it. Uh, it would have been a tough play, but that's Smith. Smith has done a great job here in the second half for the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, he sure is. That was a good defensive play, but it was a good pass, and it would have been a hard catch. I mean, it, it was. Uh, uh, I like the play call, and I have to say this too. Porter did a great job. We talked about him as a, as a runner and a receiver. But right there, he did a great job blocking, uh, which allowed them to actually get that play off. When you look at that on the replay, though, it's, it's hard to say whether he, he would have even scored on that play had he made the catch. It would have been close. So Southern takes over at the four-yard line. And a big run by Christopher Cheney to start the second half. So right away, Ladarius Skelton turns, hands it to Cheney, and Cheney comes up with a nice run for the Southern Jaguars. That's a big play for Southern. And again, that offensive line created that room, and Cheney just did a great job. Once he saw daylight, he just ran to it.
Jaguars on the attack again. The handoff goes to Cheney again. It looked almost like the same play. He goes down the sideline, and a huge game for Cheney. Yeah, they're running right off of uh, that left tackle's tail and just cutting it right offside, running inside out. So right off the left tackle, taking it right to the sideline. Just uh, great blocking inside. Yeah. Yeah, Cheney had a back-to-back -back rushes. The first rush was for 16 yards, came right back with a 22-yard run. So the, the, the Jaguars, again, flexing their muscles on the ground, getting it done on the ground. And you know what? If it's, it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, before that run, he had 85 yards. He's going to be pushing 100 yards here real soon. Isaac Pepper's on the stop. But Cheney's getting his work out here in the second half, and he's being very productive for the Jaguars. Nine carries, 95 yards. He's averaging 10 yards a carry. And Coach Dawson Odom's going to give him a blow as Ben, Devon Ben, checks back into the backfield. Skelton turns, hands to Ben. And he dives forward for a nice gain. So once again, the surge from that offensive line. They're moving the ball. They're getting five, six yards a, a clip here. Yeah, and Bishop sticks out again. I mean, I think he, uh, let's watch 65 here. You see how he turns it? That's 62, excuse me. Turns it right back up in there. Nice job. That's Dallas Black. Well, that offensive line for Southern came to play tonight. You know, it sticks into my mind when we were talking to Coach Odoms how he said, we have to get off to a quick start. He emphasized that several times, and his team did tonight. And another running play forward. It's Ben again surging for another first down for the Jaguars. Well, they like what they see off of left tackle. Rico Merriweather on the stop. And now the Jaguars aren't going to be in any hurry at all. They have a 21-7 lead with 11.44 to go, and the clock is ticking down. So far, this drive has been all on the ground. Skelton turns and hands it to Ben again. And this time he runs into a black wall there. He is stacked up. Paul Reeves, one of the Golden Lions, along with Joshua Wallace. He didn't get much on that at all. They're running right behind Carter, the left tackle. Richard, sophomore, 6'5", 300 pounds. Where do you want to run? I think I'll run behind him. Well, that whole offensive line, you could just go down the list. Carter, Jer Jeremiah Abbey, Brinson, Bishop, Harris. I mean, they've had an outstanding game for the Jaguars. You come out and you get that kind of push up front. I mean, maybe Ben... And Christopher Cheney should take those guys out for pizza this week. <laughs> I don't know if they can afford that. Check, no. check that. You know, you know he had to change the athletic yeah. budget. Being on the game, short being on the play. Yeah, I, I, maybe not. Yeah, that, that's a budget changer. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe Watts helping out on the stop for the Golden Lions. I'm not sure what this flag's about. It. After the play, personal foul, face mask, number 12, defense. That's a 15-yard penalty. Result of the play, first down. That's Sean Steele. I'm not sure what happened there, but I did see Jeremiah Houston go flying and rolling. And, and, and so uh, I don't know if he grabbed him by the face mask and threw him down, but, uh, you know, he kind of looked guilty when it happened. So. Well, that's a big 15 yards to tack on to what has already been an outstanding drive, mostly on the ground, all on the ground. Skelton again turns and hands it to Christopher Cheney again. So both those guys are getting their workout in the backfield. Yeah, Ben, 20 carries, 80 yards, and Cheney. Now 10 carries, probably just under 100 yards, about 98. Yep. Actually, 102. 102, but the most impressive thing about Cheney is he's averaging like 10.2 a shot. Yeah. <laughs> is that That's good? a pretty good clip. So the Jaguars again on offense with a second down coming up. We have 9.46 to go in the ball game, and the clock ticks down. 
Skelton hands inside again to Cheney, and he just muscles his way forward. Blake Connor comes up for the stop with some help from Christian Brown, number 27. I think this is the part where if you're the Southern uh, offensive line coach, you kind of have you sitting a little taller on that offensive, on that sidelines with a swell, saying, look at my line, make some holes. Well, you know, this is the type, type of game where you want to put it in your offensive line's hands and let your running backs go to work. You know, they, they, if you're an offensive lineman, you live for this type of situation. Skelton hands inside, and it's another big hole for Cheney. He's tackled somewhere near the five-yard line. Yeah, on, on that play, you can see the entire offensive line takes a step with their left, and they just connect whoever's in their way and drive them left. The running back starts left and kicks back and cuts back just, just briefly right off the tail of that right tackle. Cheney's up to 107 yards, but his average has dropped. It's now 8.9. <laughs> But I think you'll take it. So this has been an keep, keep in mind, this drive started on the four-yard line when Arkansas Pine Bluff went for a fourth and goal. This time, Ladarius Skelton keeps and he hops in for his third touchdown of the ball game on the ground. Ladarius Skelton, the Pine Bluff native, making his homecoming tonight. A very strategic moment when he decides to run. I think that's what's probably been very impressive for me is watching when Southern decides to run a play where he's going to run or not and obviously right there he was given that option hey look if you see you see green go for it uh, and so it keeps that defense you get two running backs that are running really well and then he keeps the ball Martel Fontenot adds the extra point 28 to 7 take a look at Mr. Skelton he is familiar with Pine Bluff and he likes scoring touchdowns in his hometown Southern up 28 to 7 jacket has to earn the right to be on your back just don't forget the tag rookie Carhartt we've got your back 24-7 And we have eight minutes and 17 seconds to go here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And the Southern Jaguars have just taken a 28-7 lead as they kick it off. It is going to be a short kick, and the Golden Lions will have a chance to return it. And it's going to be right where he would have gotten had he touched it down in the end zone. Out of bounds on the 25-yard line is Henry Murphy with a nice return for the Golden Lights. I think it's the first return of the night, right? Everything else has been in the end zones. Pretty much. Those kickers have done a great job of making sure that there have not been any returns in this game. Nothing close, really. And Murphy just said, you know what? We've Every one of them have been down. That was a short kick. I'm going to take my chances. 28-7, 8-10 in the game in the fourth quarter. I think what Pine Bluff needs to do is just, just execute. Go out there, attack. Uh, I think you can't just stare up at the scoreboard, attack, get your score, then you start worrying about things, but you got to move. Golden Lions starting first and 10 from their 26-yard line. Shannon Patrick back in as the quarterback again. Has some time to throw, fires underneath. That's Wilkes, and he's going, going to be pushed out of bounds. Josh Wilkes, and he's, he's done well on that play. They've run that play several times tonight with some success. And right now, if you're Southern, you give them that all day long, right? You don't have a problem with that. You just stay back because what you don't want to happen is you suck in on that play and they run a double move and then you get burned. Patrick looking to throw it again. Comes low, has Ballard, and Ballard's going to go out of bounds. Number 10, Eastling got him out of bounds quickly, but that will move the sticks and it'll be a first down for the Golden Lions. Ball, he's fighting on the 43. Clock continues to move. 7.33 to go. Patrick with good protection. Fires over the middle and it's incomplete. Tried to squeeze it into Ballard again, but there were three white shirts right there. That was a tough one. Yeah, I think he wanted too much there. He had his running back wide open. Just needed to dump it down them, get your six or eight yards, and then just line up again and go. 
Well, we saw they did a really good job earlier in the third quarter of getting that ball near the sidelines and stepping out, excuse me, near the end of the first half when they were trying to preserve time. Blitz is on. He dumps it underneath and it's Tyron Ralph. Tyron, Tyron Ralph with a nice gain. Number seven. Well, Tyron just looks scary to me, the way he, he looks explosive. Well, that's a good job of just dumping that ball underneath. He read the blitz coming, did a good job of going to his outlet receiver before the pressure could get there. Ralph, 5'8", 161 pounds. He's a junior from New Orleans, making that catch and picking up another first down for the Golden Lions. Patrick operating with seven minutes to go. Dumps it underneath again. He has Wilkes this time. Josh Wilkes, number three, makes the catch for a short game. On the defense, Caleb Carter making the stop right there for the Golden Lions. Yeah, Southern doing a nice job of keeping everybody in front of you and just making sure you make sure tackles. Both teams have done a nice job of sure tackling. But right now, if you're Southern, it's exactly what you want to do. Keep them in front of you. Don't let anybody get behind you. Yeah, the clock is, is the Jaguars' friend right now. I mean, they want that clock to continue to roll as Patrick. Fires one on the slant pass. It is completed. He has his man. That's Dewan Miller again, and Miller's going to take a little break. Yeah, that's Miller. a pretty hard hit he that's took. Another Golden Lions first down at the 30-yard line of the Jets. That's been the pass that the uh, Golden Lions have had the most success with tonight. Kyle McGregor, number 50, helping out on the tackle for the for the uh, Jaguars. As, as the Golden Lions have moved the football all the way down to the 30-yard line with 5.56 to go. Patrick again looking to throw. Under throws it again, and it's picked off. This time by number seven, Jacoby Papillon, and he has some room to go before he's finally tripped up. But once again, Patrick's pass was a little behind the receiver. It's intercepted. And a nice return by the Southern Jaguars with 5.44 to go. Yeah, and again, it's kind of been the same thing. A little bit under underthrown ball. And again, the receiver that time, he had no chance to come back and help. Ballard couldn't have stopped that one. Well, it kind, of, it kind of looked like the receiver and the quarterback weren't exactly on the same page. It's kind of, I think, Patrick expected Ballard to come back to cut inside. Ballard kind of slid behind the play, and it's an interception. And it kind of summarizes what the night has been offensively for the Golden Lions because they have moved the football. They've been in scoring position. They've had opportunities, but the turnovers in scoring position have really hurt them tonight. And you're right. I think most uh, most of those turnovers have been deep into Southern's uh, territory. So th those are ones you can't get back. You do a great job moving the ball, and then you get stuck uh, on that side. It looked like Jordan Lewis, the defensive end, came off a little slow after that play as well. And the Jaguars come out with the pass, and you see Sean Snee Steele pointing back at the Southern Ball Club there. He's something he didn't like on the play, but that was a bit of a surprise with 5.40 to go. I think the T.J. Bedford, I saw him kind of looking, shaking his head like, man, I missed it. I think uh, there was a little miss. Skelton saw something, and Bedford didn't see exactly what he saw, but he realized where that ball went, where he probably should have been, looked like. But it does stop the clock. 540 in the fourth here. Skelton at quarterback with Ben in the backfield, and Ben is not going to pick up much. Maybe two inside there, but for him, you, you have to be impressed with the effort by the Southern Jaguars tonight. They lost a heartbreaker last week. They didn't play a good first half. Came back in the second half, made a big rally, came back to take the lead, and then they would lose down the stretch. And, to you know, when we talked to Coach this week, he said, my team is not down. They have their head up. This is where we're going to find out what they're made of. And they came out here tonight, and they played extremely well. Now, could, I agree 100%. And, again, I think the offensive line needs to if you were giving out game balls, you have to give it to all of them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like you said, you don't want to do that free meal, though, unless you really no, have to. The balls are cheaper. Skelton dancing around in the pocket. Now he's going to run, and he just steps out of bounds after a short pickup. See, that's where he just needs to just Skelton lay down. <laughs> Let that clock keep going. And there will be another Jags first down. Yeah, we, you know, we mentioned some of these guys before. You talk about the big fellas up front. you got quarter, 6'5", 300. Jeremiah Abbey, 6'4", 325. Brinson, 6'1", 280. 
Bishop, 6'2", 300, and Jodice Harris, 6'8", 325. Yeah, and Jodice's played well. I've seen a lot of that. Remember when they were really moving that ball in the last drive at left tackle? That's who they were running off of, Jodice. And they obviously, he's been, he's been doing his work. And that is Ben again on the handoff. Surging forward, Tyler Smith, number 97, there to make the stop on Ben. They're going to have two backs over 100 yards in this game. Ben's right at 99. Well, I mean, that's, you know, you know you come out, and you, you want to see what you're made of, and you come out and say we're going to run the football, and you get two backs over 100 yards. That's pretty impressive. That's an impressive night. And you look at Cheney with the 107, and like, what do you say, Ben has 99? Yep. Well, actually, his net dropped him down to 83 because he had, he had a couple of lo uh, lost, uh, yeah, he just lost yards it. there. So, uh, But it's still a very impressive night for both those guys. Ben with 21 carries and Cheney with 12. Ben again on the carry. And it, it kind of it's flew under the radar. And not really because he rushed for three touchdowns. But if you look at Skelton, he has eight carries for 52 yards and the three touchdowns. He's very productive. <laughs> he picks the right moments, and that's what I was saying earlier. He picks the right moments to run. You know he's dangerous. You have to sit there and wait. And right about the time you think, okay, these backs are going to keep getting the ball, he just keeps it himself and takes it in. And he's got some great moves. I mean, he, it's not like it's just he, – he has one or two moves that create that opening. Third down now coming up for the Jaguars. About 3.07 to go. Skelton fires a pass. He hits his man. That's Benford on the slant pattern. Bedford with a catch. And then he goes down, but that'll be a first down for the Southern Jaguars. That, that's what you call just trying to ice the game, put things away. Third and two, late in the game. They weren't conservative. They went for the pass. That's trusting your quarterback, trusting your receivers to go do what they need to do to seal the game off. Well, and that little slant pass, if you do read it right, it's – it's it's usually as good as a run as it's, far as protecting the football. But that was yeah, I agree. It's a safer pass, but it was a deeper yeah. slant. It wasn't a short one. So, but good play call. All in all, the Jaguars have got, got to be really pleased with what they have done here tonight. It's their opening game, their opening conference game in the SWAC conference, and they just came out and they said, you know, he told us on the phone, we're the defending champs. We have to go out and play like it, and I think that's what they did tonight. I agree. And, and for Pine Bluff, I mean, for me, watching them, I, I, that's a really solid team. Uh, a lot of good weapons. Uh, they just had some key turnovers in the wrong moments. Yeah, and the upcoming schedule you can see for Southern, they're not going to face Prairie View A&M on October 12th, followed by Texas Southern at Texas Southern on October 19th. And then the big one coming up with Alcorn State on October 26th. Yeah. <laughs> It's a gauntlet. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. is. So it'll it'll be good to see those guys when when they come to uh, Houston to take on Texas Southern and. Well, you want to win the West. You know what's ahead of you, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, you know what's ahead of you. And Coach Odom says never had a losing season in his eight years at Southern. That's impressive. Yeah, that's extremely impressive in in the land the, the landscape of college football today to go eight years and not have a losing season. And uh, he got his team ready to play tonight. They were opportunistic on defense, and they did the dirty work on offense. Time out. You ain't you be a timeout by Arkansas Pine Bluff. So we're going to pause for a timeout here in the booth with the Southern Jaguars leading 28-7, 125 to go in this ball game. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. One twenty-five to go in our ball game tonight. As you can see, the Southern Jaguars leading Arkansas Pine Bluff, 28 to seven. Jaguars with the football. They have it on big third down coming up for Southern now, as they've been working on the clock on this drive. This time the handoff goes to Ben again, and he's going to be taken down. Little or no gain on that play. Ladarius Skelton, the quarterback tonight, his night, 17 out of 25. Arkansas Pine Bluff will use another timeout. 
But Skelton, 17 out of 25 with 157 yards. But he also ran for three touchdowns. A very impressive outing in his homecoming. Yeah, I was going to say that the, the passing yards don't really, uh, they're not eye-popping for sure, but uh, very strategic uh, how he did it. But, again, the rushes, eight rushes, 52 yards. Uh, more importantly, three touchdowns. Uh, that's that's just impressive altogether. Now we take a look at the, at the Arkansas Pine Bluff schedule. They will take on Lane College next. That's on October 5th. Then they have Mississippi Valley State coming in here to Simmons Bank Field. That should be interesting. And then a matchup versus the Grambling State Tigers on October 26th before they wrap up the season at Jackson State and at Prairie View A&M. Yeah, so the next three games, they'll be right here getting some home cooking. Uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll uh, take a look at some of the miscues they've had, clean that up, and they'll be ready to go. So the Jaguars are going to, going to line up for a field goal here with 120 to go in the ball game. Baraha's kick is up, and it is good. So the Southern Jaguars tack on three more as Baraha comes on and kicks the field goal to make it a 31-7 lead with 1.14 to go left on the clock. I agree with you, Jorge. You know, it didn't turn out quite the way the Golden Lions would have liked tonight, but they have a lot of skilled players. This is a very, very good team, and we have not seen the last of them yet. There's no doubt about that. I mean, no. um, I think when they look at the, t the film, right, you look, you look at the, the video, and you sit down and you see how close you were to certain plays, and, and again, you see where those turnovers happen. Those were critical spots on the field where they happen. You can clean that up. Th those aren't things. The rest of the execution of their team was really good. I mean, I, I thought they had... You know, some good runs early. Uh, and, and, again, the passing other than the, uh, several of those of those uh, plays that were intercepted were pretty clean and good. I mean, but at the end of the day, Southern, 426 yards of offense. And the Golden Lions, uh, 289. So, I mean, uh, the Southern just really, really controlled the ball. It looks like it was Martel Fontenot on that field goal attempt. Good from 46 yards. And that's where we are on the scoreboard, 31-7. to seven. So the Golden Lions will get one more shot at it with a minute and 14 ticks to go left in this ballgame. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team number 30. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Really, for Arkansas Pine Bluff tonight, I mean, it's just been a, a game of turnovers. I mean, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot. I mean, they've moved the ball pretty well. When you look at it, they've been down in scoring territory. They just have not really been able to cash it in. Yeah, like I said, looking forward, th those are things that can be cleaned up. Uh, and, and I think they'll move forward and they'll be successful moving forward. A completed pass from Skyler Perry over near the sidelines as they're still playing oh, hard. Dewan Miller on DeJuan the catch. Miller. He's had a pretty good night. That's the goal line. first down. Look at the receiving and then Miller. Another completed pass. This one goes to Ballard. Miller so far on the night. Five catches for 59 yards to lead Arkansas Pine Bluff. He's out to midfield. Check that. You know, Pine Bluff came into this game, and this will maybe tell you a little bit about how well Southern played defense tonight. They were averaging 37 points a game, and tonight they have seven. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a huge, huge stat. I mean, no doubt about it, when you can hold a team that's that offensively explosive and you got seven points on the board, that, that is impressive. Skyler Perry trying to get it down in a hurry. Number 87 defense lined up in the neutral zone. That's who's the play. First down. So the Golden Lions take the play. They do not want the penalty for offsides. Have 30 seconds to go in this ball game. Perry's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to run it, slide safely to the ground. This is where you got to be careful. You don't want guys just getting hurt. 
Well, this was – and we have another flag on the play. Yeah, trying to – Offense number 78. That's 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. So that will back the Golden Lions up a bit with 24 seconds to go. And they'll go back and they'll look at the tape, and Coach Thomas will say, hey, fellas, we were right there. We did everything except hang on to the football. And the Southern Jaguars can say, well, we were very opportunistic tonight. They came in, forced a couple of turnovers, played some really good defense tonight. Very impressive. Uh, they played a complete game. They really did. And again, even though Skelton had two uh, first-half interceptions, he took care of the ball in the second half. We talked about the 16 starters that Southern had coming back. Well, that experience showed tonight. They really came out and they played like an experienced team. And that will do it right there as Skyla Perry runs out of bounds. And you can see Coach Thomas getting his guys out there to go congratulate the Southern Jaguars. As we take a look, our final score, 31-7. to So for Jorge Vargas, I am Butch Alcindor saying so long from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where the final score is 31-7. to the Southern Jaguars knocked off Arkansas Pine Bluff. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody.